Yeah! There he is. Gotta get my perfect pour. Is that Blue Moon? It is. Mmm! But it's not the Belgian beers. I dig it. The Belgian beers. Busting those beers out for Voluntary Viewings 2020 Top 10s episode. This is the episode where all of us rank the games, movies, and shows we watched in 2020 that had some kind of arguable release in 2020. We rank them, and then we fight to prove the definitive ranking of the best pieces of media of this past year. Fighting Other, to the death, we might add. Fighting to... This mm. is an arena. We, But, of course, at the end of the day, ultimately, this is the definitive ranking. Other outlets, yeah, fair. You know what? They're doing them. But, no. This is, this is how we do. And the we in this episode is a man who could honestly be categorized as a biohazardous weapon. Ryan Holtz. Oh, man. I don't know what that reference is from. I don't know. I'm just typing you up. It like, sounds like oh, you're okay. saying that he has COVID. Oh. Usually they have themes. Oh. So I was trying to figure out the theme. I was like, biohazardous weapon. Good. Yeah, it does kind of sound like COVID, right? Yeah. Or it totally. sounds like um, like ancient siege tactics where they would put like diseased corpses into catapults and fling them into cities mm -hmm. to like get everyone sick. I was more. I was more trying to go for you are a biological thing and also a deadly weapon. So, nah, mm. nah. could have been more when clear you say, on that one. When you say biohazardous, that's... I should have just said bioweapon. <laughs> yeah, bioweapon. Uh, Ryan holds. It, okay. Yeah. Just some Resident Evil shit up in here. <laughs> also, also on this podcast today, we have a man who is a three-time masked wrestling champion under the name Diablo Blanco, Andrew Clark. I am the white chicken. <laughs> That's not chicken. <laughs> Diablo does not stand for chicken. I think that was a Talladega Nights reference. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Although I can't remember exactly what the line is. Like El El Diablo, and it's and he thinks it means like fighting chicken. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No more shake and bake. From now on, we are Magic Man and El Diablo. <laughs> and of course, last but not least, I am a karate warlord, Lucas the Writer. Oh, you're like that AMC show that nobody watched. <laughs> Into the there was Badlands. A karate Warlord show on um, AMC. Man, what was it called? Into the Badlands. Yeah, it's like the Wild West, but it's also like samurais and shit. Because the apocalypse yeah. happened, yeah, but not I, a zombie one. I was really confused by the the marketing, and I think it only made it like two seasons. Wasn't good. Is it on your list? <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, all right, before we begin, a couple unroll mentions. Best manga of the year, Chainsaw Man, obviously. Best anime, Doro Hidoro. These are facts. What if we had, like, <laughs> we had opinions on these? Do you? No, I don't, <laughs> but what if we did? You didn't ask. <laughs> there was no discussion. There was a brief, like, period in before where you were like, oh, hey... Anyone have any questions or things before we get started and start recording? And, and there was no mention that Lucas was going to award single-handedly best manga and best anime. And also, he's awarding best anime, but the anime is on his top shows list. Yeah, what? <laughs> also, it's like Doro Hidoro came out a long time ago, and it just was released to Netflix recently. And you're oh, yeah, that counts. The, the best anime of 2020? I mean, it was released internationally in 2020. I think that counts. I think when that was counts. the original thing released? Um, the 90s, right? No, what? Oh, 2019, what? like late okay. 20, 2019 into 2020. Oh, that counted. it. Yeah, hundred percent. I yeah. thought if like, it released in Japan in 2019 and then in like the rest of the world in 2020, totally counts. I could have sworn that you said that this was like a really old anime that was finally getting. A wide release, or an English dub, or something. I'm for Doro Doro. Trying to think of what. Mm. 
nothing coming to mind. And of course, the best podcast of 2020 is the voluntary viewing <laughs> colon quarantine cast. Bye, oh, Mario. the quarantine cast beat out the voluntary viewing. Well, podcast. voluntary viewing won in 2019, so we don't want to give it to him back to back, mm. you know. Yeah, it's like the MVP fatigue for like LeBron James, yeah. and right. where it's just like we can't give it to him every year. <laughs> I mean, we kind of gotta yeah. just do the best player not named LeBron yeah. <laughs> wins MVP. Aaron, Aaron Donald probably should get Defensive Player of the Year every single yeah. year, but they're like, oh, he only got 15 sacks this season. Whatever. <laughs> He only got 15 sacks as an interior lineman, I guess. <laughs> Still leading the league, I, but who cares? Yeah, I was going to say, Justin Houston got 16, so he deserves <laughs> consideration. Guys, I only have so much shelf space. You got to, like every other, every other year. Aaron Donald's got space on his fucking traps. <laughs> <laughs> He's got tables on his shoulders that he can put trophies on. <laughs> uh that's what, he, that's what he straps on instead of shoulder pads before every game. Yeah. You know, just got trophies. Literal tables. <laughs> yeah. All right. This year we are starting out with TV shows. Andrew Clark is... Should we explain to... the concept? Is that oh, like important? I mean, well, we've done it two times already. What we're even doing? We got yeah. new yeah, viewers. There's new we fans. Got, yeah. we got new, okay. Okay. You guys, one of you guys want to take it? I got to save my voice for all yeah. of this. Okay. This is Lucas's version of having us fight. So... <laughs> You saw the title of the episode. It's the top tens. We make our all three of us nominate our top ten games, shows, and movies. We put them in a nice little list. Uh, I think we usually go through them first, and then we fight to the death to determine the official top ten of the Voluntary Viewing Podcast by taking turns nominating shows for each spot, um, and then eventually coming out. With the top ten, uh, alliances are formed, uh, hopes are dashed. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a little to get something that you want further down the line, uh, and and uh, weeb shit will never make it. Apparently. Yeah. So <laughs> if two years have taught us anything, <laughs> so for I'll example, keep trying. you might you might have Andrew, who's you know maybe his uh, top TV show of the year isn't as much of a priority. So one of Lucas or Ryan tries to form an alliance with Andrew to get his votes on matters that they care about, such as uh, if Cheer, in the case of Ryan, or Belle Delphine's OnlyFans, in the uh, case of Lucas, is going to win Best TV Show. I, and like another good strategy is if you have a show that's highly ranked that no one else has, then you might need to sacrifice it on a few spots because... It's most important that it makes mm-hmm. the, the list top at 10. all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I see right now there's a couple of shows that all of us watch that I didn't think as strongly of as some of the other two, but since we all watched it, it's a better bet that it gets in the top top few spots whereas some of my shows that only I watched, I need to sacrifice and I'm, I'm Lucas with video games and mm. <laughs> it's the same concept. So with that what do we, we go through our top 10 shows? What'd you, ch- what'd you watch in 2020, Andrew? So we're starting at 10 and moving our way up, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so in the 10 spot is a movie that I put here, or not a movie, a TV show, TV show um, that is on the list more for cultural relevance than, <laughs> than anything else. Uh, a mini series of documentaries that I enjoyed in a perverse way. And also because there was nothing else on at the beginning of quarantine. We're talking about Tiger King on Netflix. The the wacky wild ride that showed you a bunch of colorful and hate-worthy characters and then really didn't have anything to say in the end. (laughs) What else you got? Uh, Number nine, Hollywood. Also Netflix series. uh, I think it was a nine-part miniseries of... Yeah. What would Hollywood have been like in the 40s if people tried to be good? <laughs> so it was like, what if all the black actors weren't blacklisted? Or I, I guess I should say it like takes the situation of Hollywood in the you know 40s and 50s and translates it to a couple of people stand up and try to do what's right. So uh, a lot of the gay members of the Hollywood community kind of like, go out in the open and like show people that it's okay to be gay and they they don't blacklist uh 
like the black female lead who's going to be, you know, the uh, Oscar winner for best actress and all that kind of stuff. And there's there's a, a lot going on that way of like, man, Hollywood fixed the world because they decided to not be shitty instead of like what actually happened, which is very pretentious mm. the the idea that like they just fixed america but but also like yeah like things you know may have been a little bit better if you know hollywood had done the right things but it it was okay it was an okay show uh just kind of like a fun ride um a lot of really hammy acting that was like enjoyable at some points and just kind of like took you out of it at others and you could tell that they were kind of rushed. I feel like there was supposed to be an extra episode that they just didn't have because the penultimate episode ends with the film that they make being destroyed. The The guys from the movie studio show up. They're like, we are not going to be able to sell this film. You're going to run us into the ground with all your blacks and your gays and everything in between and or interracial couples and stuff like that. So they take all of the copies of the film and burn it. And that's how the episode ends. And the next episode begins with people hanging out with like, oh man, that really sucks. Good thing we fired all those assholes that burned the tape, but we don't have any more. And then the editor pops and he's like, actually, I got one more. And then they're like, hey, the movie is still here. And then, and then that's it. And the movie is made and then they get all the awards. Uh, Andrew, as much as I love you digging into what you liked and hated about all of these shows, th- this needs to be a little more rapid fire. I'm sorry, I'll like two or three sentences faster. about what's up and <laughs> why it's here. Uh, number eight, Fargo, season four. I Honestly, this is probably only at eight because I haven't been able to finish the season. I only watched the first Ooh. couple of episodes, uh, but it is still really good. It's Fargo. It's it's one of my favorite shows. Not quite as wacky as it usually is. What I expected it to be wackier with Chris Rock at the helm, but mm-hmm. yeah, still very enjoyable. Season or uh, ep- number seven, The Witcher, which technically released uh, in late December of last year, but I didn't start watching it until the turn of the new year. Uh, the Witcher is just like a fun show that I really mm-hmm. enjoy. Um, uh, you know, like the video game Witcher Three, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, number six, Archer. The new season of Archer kind of got back into um, what we liked about Archer. You know, it's the you know the spy shit. They they change up the dynamics between the characters a little bit once Archer is out of his coma and he's been there for three years and seeing all the people's lives be like really great because Archer isn't there to tear him down and then watch them all fall apart because he's back is pretty good. Um, number five, The Queen's Gambit. It's that chess show with the hot redhead. Yeah. Um, it, it's good. That, I, I enjoyed it. I think it's just like a solid show. Uh, pretty decent acting. Um, not a lot of chess shows out there. And yeah, I, I think the lead gave a, a really good performance. Uh, number four, Westworld season three. Um, honestly, it would have been higher if they didn't kind of bungle the like last episode or two of the show. They really set it up with a lot of good things that they could have done with it. They had like a great future world. They had a lot of good stuff going on. And then they really got up their own ass and like tried to go with the convoluted oh, bullshit West again. Westworld? What? Season three is the one where they got up their own ass? Westworld? They didn't, pay, they didn't deliver on the payoffs they set up? What? I said what I said. <laughs> I loved season one. They were firmly up their own ass in season one. Yeah, but but I mean, like they didn't they didn't deliver in season three. They they got up their own ass or two. Kind of set th- <laughs> some things up. I like season two. Um, I know you did. Most most of season three was better, I think, than like the whole of season two. However, the ending was just like very mediocre. Fair. Season three was not that well received. I'm throwing that one out there. Mm. Well, I received it well. So, <laughs> did you? You just said. I just like, said. I, it's it's ten episodes. I like. I really like the first seven or eight a lot, and the last two are just like, eh. But doesn't the last two like that can poison? Yeah, and it dropped it down to number four. Eight. I know, but it can poison it. So then you look at the first seven and eight and go like, eh. <laughs> well yeah it, no, it, that great exactly yeah like it was it was really good and then it wasn't so it, <laughs> like 
if you if you had stopped watching it at you know episode seven and you didn't really know what happened the last two or three episodes you would have been like this is really good so far and then it just was just kind of okay as a whole as a result so fair enough um at number three i got the mandalorian because i'm a big big old star wars nerd um it's good i really liked (laughs) it did you watch the finale i did okay it was great it sounds like the finale the finale like all the tweets were like i believe in star wars again (laughs) yeah (laughs) it was apparently that good you know it was it was really really good um it, it kind of, it was a mix of really good because it just was executed well and had a lot of good performance and like a lot of good payoff for what they had been setting up the last two seasons. And it was also really good because it was like, oh my God, Star Wars. <laughs> Star <laughs> Wars is good again. This has redeemed Star Wars for me. And it kind of sucks knowing that the prequels happen canonically, or not the prequels, the uh the sequel trilogy happens Mm -hmm. after this that a lot of the stuff going on right now is kind of ruined knowing that in the story timeline 10 years from now everything fucking sucks um but so so far it's just really great Mm. and it's it's fun it's fun more than anything like it's i wouldn't say like it's gonna win like best tv show or anything like that it's the writing is like kind of hammy. There's a lot of fan service, but like it's just, it's so much fun to watch. It's just a joy. Fair enough. Number two, you know what it is. We got the boys, uh, but not the boys, boys. Uh, we got Auntie Donna's <laughs> Big Old House of Fun, number two, the Netflix series. I don't really have anything to say about this because we're going to probably talk about it more. Um, but yeah, you, you already know what it is. And then mm-hmm. at number one, I got the boys. And part of it for me is that uh, I watched season one and two this year, and I know that season one doesn't technically count for 2020, where, you know, because I think season one was a little bit better than season two, but I think, you know, kind of, if you put them both together, it's maybe my favorite show I've seen so far this year, so. Fair. That is Andrew's top 10. Ryan, what do you got for shows? Oh, man. At number 10, we've got Larry David back on his bullshit, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, yeah. Everyone should watch, well, I guess the Spite Store was set up throughout the season. It was like the running uh, running bit. But the concept of o- opening a Spite Store, which is just <laughs> the exact same type of store right next to a rival <laughs> because they, you don't like the coffee shop. So you open a coffee shop right next door and yes. try to ruin him. That's, that's, that's just a fun concept. Um, and he also wears a MAGA hat. I think that clip circulated. Mm-hmm. It's uh, pretty great. Um, number nine, Rick and Morty. It's a good season. No real complaints. Just a solid performance. Not not its best, but not its worst. No. I enjoyed. Uh, Vat of Acid episode. Shout out. <laughs> um, the Queen's Gambit locking in at number eight. Um, I thought it was interesting. It was fun enough. I really enjoyed her character. Uh, I... I thought her journey was a little bit just like uh uneven but it worked out it was a good show i'm glad it's a mini series that we're not gonna get a season two (laughs) but i'm sitting here waiting for them to get a season two (laughs) and it'll be like oh no now there's a a young superstar who's a nazi i don't know how they (laughs) ramp it up we'll find a way um number seven auntie donna's big old house of fun I really like the show, but like you guys are putting it with some big ol' heavy hitters, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't know if it belongs that high. We, and like Andrew said, we've talked about it at unbelievable lengths on this podcast, so I don't know if I need to dive into it. But, you know, our, our boys went mainstream, and they did a good job. So falls at number seven for me. Uh, number six, The Good Place, series finale. The show's just fucking great. It's perfect. They ended it in such a wholesome unbelievably good way uh the comedy wasn't where it was in like seasons one or two but like it paid off with like all these character revelations that we've been waiting for for a very long time and uh then it ended in just a fucking touching way Mm. so good show uh number five the boys look guys i like the boys it's a good show 100 (laughs) percent one of the best of this year but fuck me man that's (laughs) 
<laughs> Again, it's it's up. I guess for Andrew, it's up there. Yeah. Lucas, maybe not as much. But yeah, boys, fucking good. Great yeah. show. We've talked about this one as well at unbelievable lengths on this podcast. Don't need to dive into it too much. Uh, it's, a, it's a fucking romp. It's absolutely a, a joy. Uh, number four, BoJack Horseman. Watch, watch the final season of BoJack Horseman, yeah. man. It's, it's so fucking good. Like, they... Uh, uh, what? Oh, I, Raphael. What's what's the guy's name who makes it? Um, he he's 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 a genius. Like I I don't even know what they're gonna do, uh, or what he's going to do next. But I will be on board. Bojack ended. Uh, Raphael Bob Waksberg. It's it's the only way that Bojack could have ended, and boy did it end. It was great. Um, number three, what we do in the shadows, fucking gem of the year for me, <laughs> uh, FX advertising that goddamn show nonstop on Hulu and other platforms really did its job because goddamn that yeah. show is unbelievably funny and so good. And I love every single character and God season three cannot come soon enough. So good. Absolutely unstoppable. Uh, number two, the crown. Why are more people not watching The Crown? <laughs> God damn it, dude. This show's so good. We're four seasons in. This was the final season of the current cast members. We're going to get the the final queen and the final me- members of the royal family next season. Uh, season four, far and away the most even season. I feel like the, the, the Crown was personified by having unbelievable highs and like just really boring lows. Uh, in the first three seasons, this season, pretty much nonstop gold, uh, with a couple of high points on top of it. Uh, fucking great! The crown's so so good, man. Uh, and then number one, uh, fucking Better Call Saul. Like, <laughs> guys, I don't want to sound the alarm. I think Better Call Saul has eclipsed Breaking Bad oh. in terms of peak. <laughs> okay. In terms of peak. Better Call Saul has had better peaks than Breaking Bad did. It's fucking so good, you guys. Like, and like the the first season, eh, like, and various episodes throughout are just filler. Which Breaking Bad had too. Like, think of The Fly, which is just a bottle episode inside the meth lab. Like, mm. it, but Better Call Saul this season has peaked, and that peak is fucking glorious. The the, the core conceit of the season, if you guys remember when we're first introduced to Saul Goodman, he's in the back he's in the back of a trunk, he's been kidnapped, and and they or he was just kidnapped off the street. I don't think he was in the back of a trunk. And he immediately says, like, did Lalo send you? It was Nacho, I, t- I swear. Fucking that one line of dialogue was the entire plot line for this goddamn season. And what the actual fuck? A throwaway line of dialogue for an early season of Breaking Bad has become art that eclipses <laughs> Breaking Bad. What the actual fuck? It's so good. It's for everyone. Everyone needs to watch Better Call Saul. Thank and you. That's my list. Thank you so much for that list, Ryan. My list, starting at number 10, Interspecies Reviewer. So good they had to pull it off of airwaves. <laughs> JK. And off your list. <laughs> not really, though. That's not not actually my top ten. Number ten, uh, don't Dimension say pulling off right next to <laughs> interspecies reviewers. <laughs> Number ten, Dimension Twenty, Fantasy High. Uh, great first season and second season was enough that like it deserves a spot on this list. Definitely petered out at the end, but uh, COVID did not help it whatsoever. Uh, number nine, Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, anime premiered this season based on a manga that's probably like my number two or three manga of the year. Pretty good. Number eight, Grappler Baki. Another great anime. Just fucking... The person who made this cares more about martial arts than anyone else on the planet, and that bleeds through so well. Number seven, Rick and Morty. I forgot that half a season of Rick and Morty came out this year. But then, as I remembered it, and all the good beats started flowing back into me, I thought, yeah, this is number seven. Them 
high roading, not doing a 9-11 on an alien planet deserves to be number seven. And then immediately doing a Pearl uh, Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> number six, The Boys. I, you know, solid. Solid season. I enjoyed it very much. Um, would be higher if the first season, especially the start of the first season, wasn't so great and kind of cast a little bit of a shadow over this one for me personally. Number five, Doro Hidoro. Terrific anime. I said earlier, best anime of the year. Uh, number five, overall show, just because the ending's a little shaky. B Stars, number four. I know it's paradoxical to say Doro Hidoro was the best anime of the year. Yeah. But. <laughs> you have more animes. But. If I am recommending any anime of this year, it is B-Stars, just because overall, tighter package, even if it is less of my, like, personal favorite. And, yeah, I, I still am, like, every one in five months try to convince Jade to watch it, and I feel like I'm wearing her down. Number three, Castlevania. I cannot believe this came out at the start of this year, this how long this year has been, and fantastic. I generally great animated show not totally sure if it's an anime or not but spectacular number two what we do in the shadows since the episode aired i have thought about jackie daytona once a week <laughs> that's yeah. all i gotta say that's all you need mm. number one auntie donna's big old house of fun this is the only season of television I have watched twice this year. Hmm. And that is why it is in the number one spot. That's fair. All right. That is. that is where we put our own shows. Andrew, what's your pick for the number 10 show of 2020? Hmm. The number 10 that's show. The nomination. I feel like this one is a decent compromise because I have it kind of middling... Ryan has it on the lower end, and Lucas doesn't have it at all. I, I'm going to suggest The Queen's Gambit as number 10. I, I'll second it. I'll go for it. I think 10's low, because I have it at 8. I, I, again, th I think it's low, the too, definitive list. But... My list is the definitive list, so oh, it is okay. below my list, yes. Do, do I TV get, shows. Do I get a definitive list? In TV list? shows. Lu Lucas has the definitive list for anime, I guess. You're playing TV <laughs> shows. What, what do I get? Lucas has the definitive list for video games. You have, like, a decent list for video games. I have a garbage list for video games. I have the best, like, the definitive list of TV shows. And then you both have, like, somewhat decent TV shows lists. Uh, no one really has movies. No. We're all Weird. not great at movies. <laughs> it's like 20 <laughs> movies came out this year. What are we supposed to do? A lot of movies came out this year. <laughs> we just didn't watch them. Because we couldn't go see the them. Ah. Uh, we couldn't no. see them in theaters. But yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with The Queen's Gambit at number 10. And I can see that, uh, okay, this is going to be one of those, one of those uh, categories where we just kind of Try to make peace in the first five, and then things tighten up real quick. <laughs> um, I believe that is going to be me next, keeping to our rotation for number nine. Um, hmm. I... Andrew, are you okay with Fargo being number nine? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> this season got panned. This season actually did not was not well received by critics. Like I I said Westworld wasn't that well received. Fargo was like actually not well received at all. People <laughs> hated this season. What? And I watched the I watched the first couple seasons that I was not gonna watch this one. Now it's on our fucking list. Good Omens Part 2. <laughs> the vitriol right away. Take that into number 8, Ryan. Number 8. I was going to say Curb for 9 if Lucas nominated some anime shit for wow. 9. Wow. <laughs> but but no, I acknowledge now Curb is too far. And like this season was good, but it wasn't special. So number eight's obviously got to be Rick and Morty. Like right in between me and Lucas, it works out. It's a good fit. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'll vote for that. So Not that it matters, but I'll vote for it. Yeah, where was Rick and Morty on your list, Andrew? Like honestly, like honestly, I forgot that it came out this year, and and I think that's why I decided to not put it on my list because only half of it came out this year, 
The other half came out in 2019. And while I liked it, I thought a lot of the second half of the season was like kind of forgettable. It was just, it was good. I enjoyed it. It came out a long time ago, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, it, just, it, didn't, right it didn't stick with me, which is why I, I didn't end up putting it on my list. I think there were shows on my list that weren't as good as Rick and Morty, obviously, but I remembered them a little bit better, so I, I thought they deserved to get on my list. The split season you remember format. Tiger King better than Rick and Morty? <laughs> yeah, and, like, t- Tiger King was not great, but it was a cultural phenomenon. It was the only yeah. thing people were talking about for a week. No, I see where you're coming from. Well, longer than a week. I see where you're coming from. Um, Also, fun fact, Rick and Morty was number eight for the 2019 top tens as well. Uh, We are anything if consistent. Uh, Andrew, you're up. Hmm, number seven. Hmm, Number seven. I gotta, I gotta decide if I'm going to go with the one that I want at number seven, or like take one that's higher on my list that I don't think is going to make it otherwise. <laughs> uh, I think I know which one you're eyeing up right now. I, I don't know if you do, because um, I want The Witcher to get on at, at number seven. I, I do. I, I really okay. enjoyed The Witcher. If Ryan's not gonna vote. That's with a me, no for me, dog. <laughs> I watched The Witcher. That show sucked. Wait, you did? I thought you only watched yes. like, the first episode. No, I watched like the first three or four episodes with <gasps> Ian, like on and off. I wasn't paying that close of attention, but Ian hated it, and like that confirmed to me that like yes, it wasn't just because I wasn't paying that close of attention. Like, wow, that show was not very good, man. Oh, I got, I dropped it after three episodes too. I yeah, think that means wow. dude, that show's not that good, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> you like, and that's fair because you like The Witcher, and like I'm not gonna try to take it away, but man, just, oof. Not Valley so of Plenty me. is a bop, but eh. <laughs> is that a no? Then you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I accept my defeat, but still Andrew, you had an option that here that I incorrect. think you might have gotten away with, and instead you decided to really try to squeeze it, and I think you're going to get burned. Fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Do your worst. <laughs> okay. On to me then. Um. Uh, now we are at a weird place where my number seven is already on there. Um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Is... Did Lucas just power That's not going to come across on the recording, no. but yeah. It sounded like, it sounded like, like a car. <laughs> <laughs> Your oh, mic fuck. does that sometimes on our ears. Uh... It's hilarious. <sighs> All right, here comes the weeb shit. Uh, B stars number seven. No, no, man. Uh, no, what? You just can't. Fuck all of y'all. Even even if you guys didn't shit. like The Witcher, like a lot of people did. Like no. Castlevania, you might have gotten away yeah. with Luke. The f- oh, I watched a little right. Castlevania. The fucking right. furry show. No, <laughs> the furry show. <laughs> the fucking you furry ain't show. slick, man. Fuck, Andrew, back to you then after a round no, of rejection. Oh, it's Ryan, Ryan, fuck, I'm sorry, me. I'm sorry. I'm Andrew sorry, got Ryan. Down too. You're up. Let's see if we're going to full round of rejections on this one. Um, I'm going to go with The Good Place at seven. I think that's a universally beloved show and it's nice. good. And fucking Kristen Bell is a treasure and there's not much more I can say about it. It, it ended. It, it deserves its spot. Neither of I'll us give- have seen it, but I don't think we have any opinions against it so i've seen enough clips of it to have a fondness to say yes to the good place at number seven all right i'll go with it too back to you andrew Andrew. all right um i'll 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 do the one that i probably should have done uh the mandalorian oh Oh, did you well, think yeah. I was going to do yes. Westworld? Yes. yes. Well, okay, yes. sure. Yeah, no, 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 Mandalorian, Mandalorian, Mandalorian I definitely thought six. I was going to do Westworld. I, I thought you were going to do Westworld, and you might have gotten away with it at seven. Oh, right? I, I, didn't, no. I didn't think I was going to get away with it at seven. Uh, probably not. I would have said no. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, Lucas exactly. might have. Lucas would have said no, no too. No, Mandalorian at six. Make it. I'll take that. There was no point. In I'll me. take Mandalorian. Mandalorian legitimately sounds like good TV at this point. And honestly, like if it hadn't gotten such a claim so late i probably would have watched it and the fact that it was two seasons i would have had to watch two seasons in a well, brief period of time so here here's what i'll say 
Each season is eight episodes, and the episodes are between 30 minutes and 45 minutes. Like, it is not a huge time commitment to just watch all of it. I, I watched all I of know, season but, one mm-hmm. in, like, two days. Like a while I feel ago. like it came on strong in, like, November, and by that point, I would have had to watch, like, two seasons in a somewhat brief period of time, mm-hmm. in addition to my PS5 and everything yeah. like that. So it was just too much of a time commitment to fill out. But yeah, no, I'm very comfortable with Mandalorian at six. Yeah. That's like kind of perfect, I feel like. And and, I, and while it sounds like Ryan might be kind of interested in it, so I'd say, yeah, Ryan, go ahead, watch it. Lucas, you should absolutely watch the Mandalorian. I know. You are you are actually a Star Wars fan. I yeah, mean, I hate Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to watch this now. So... <laughs> Ryan, hating Star Wars is a prerequisite to being a Star Wars fan. <laughs> You're halfway there already. I feel like we've made this joke before. Never gets yeah. old. Might have been last year's top ten. <laughs> um, fuck it, I gotta shoot my shot. Uh, number five, Castlevania. It's just too high, man. What? It's just too high. Lu- I just Lucas. Yes. One day. <laughs> maybe not today maybe oh. not tomorrow oh my god but one day i will call upon you with a favor oh my fucking god <laughs> if i vote for andrew the truce andrew we've done so much good work together using one core tenet and that is no weeb shit <laughs> it's not even weeb shit though it's an animated show it's not an anime if it had if it had mainstream appeal, but it doesn't, and no one talks but about it. Ryan, what do you mean nobody talks about it? This, this is no one talks about Castlevania. Castlevania is not in it is, the fucking public psyche. It's mostly because this is probably the least weeby anime on your of course list. It is. Yeah, that's why you put it so high. Yeah. <laughs> you, but Ryan, we had a good truce going, and then you didn't side with me on The Witcher. <laughs> I just sided with you on The Mandalorian. Hmm. I thought it was a great pick. I said, "Congrats, man! I love it." And and I really respect your opinion on this one. And I think I'm gonna absolutely give it a shot. And now here you are, fucking robbing probably Bojack of its of its decent spot. Hmm. Well, okay. So who who's after Lucas? Ryan, you're after Lucas. Ryan. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So Ryan. If you nominate Bojack... No, this is cheating. I think this is cheating. I don't no, know that you're not. Can you can't ask what's next. Yeah. yeah. That, that it, seems pretty cheaty if we're if we're making deals for future on this Ryan, one, yeah. one day, maybe not today, <laughs> maybe not tomorrow, <laughs> but you'll ask me for a favor. <laughs> and, and I will accept. Wow. Yes or no on Castlevania at number five, Andrew? I, I'm, I'm going to go with yes to try to oh. limit limit the hate putting himself in debt to me and putting lucas in his debt in one fell swoop technically lucas is in debt to ryan (sighs) what oh Oh, the transitive property yeah he's in debt to me i'm in debt to you therefore you can just skip me and lucas is in debt to you (laughs) so what if what if andrew your favor is to get lucas on a yes on mine and then you still owe me one (laughs) What if it's a double ten? <laughs> I don't know if it's going to come to that. Ryan, yeah, hit us up with number four. <sighs> Fuck, man. I guess it's got to be the boys, right? Yeah, I'd go with the boys at number yeah. four. Yeah, let's do it. The boys at four. I know Andrew's got it at one, but I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Some more mid tier. I feel like the differences between Andrew's top three. Or the space between Andrew's top three is a lot narrower narrower than, like, our top three. Yeah. And can I just say officially that fucking Bojack belongs on this list? It's sad <laughs> that it's not on there. Um, Andrew, that is number three to you. Hmm. You're in a weird, weird place now. Um, I say we go with Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun at number three. Lucas, I know you have it at number one. I've got it at number two, so it's right there. I think I think top three is something that at least you and I can agree on. I know Ryan was kind of shocked we had it so high, but I mean, I'm not shocked. I mean, you guys liked it. Yeah. I mean, you I liked you liked it too. it too, just slightly less. <laughs> yeah. 
What do you think? What do you think, Lucas? Um, I'm sorry. I was doing uh, math in my head for a second, but uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm good with that. All right. Okay, so then that is to me. Um, hmm. All right, I think, I think I see how this one's gonna play out. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, what we do in the shadows from number two. Yeah, I'm gonna say yes, and then once again, I'm going to say the crown belongs in this fucking list. This is insane that it's not on the list, but oh well. So, it does not matter what I say because the vote has already happened. I will say though, even though I didn't get to season two of what we do in the shadows. I do not give a shit about this show. <laughs> I do. You've made that very. Clear. I tried watching. I don't know why people think it's funny. I just, I just don't get it. And maybe it's because I just got a small brain. Maybe, I, maybe <laughs> I. You got... have no comedy shows, like in, yeah. other than Archer. Which, you have no comedy. Auntie you Donna's big old like house comedy. of fun isn't a comedy show. Okay, well... it's like a sketch show. Like that's a little different. It feels feels like and Archer's animated. Like I. I you don't have any live action comedy. Did you have any live action comedy in your first? Uh, Barry, but Barry's mm, mm. Barry's more of a crossover. So I don't know. And I then, think you just don't like that medium. <laughs> then the number one pick to you, Ryan. I feel like I know what's coming, but it's Better Call Saul. I will back you Let's up see. on Better Call Saul. It's oh, the number one show. You, you it's seem so very good. passionate. Please watch it. I will back you up as well. Castlevania can get it. into the top five. Better Call Saul can be number one. <laughs> Better Call Saul is fucking really good. You guys should watch it. Everyone listening should watch it. It's at this point it is a commitment. It's a lot of seasons if you haven't started it, but it's worth it, man. It's so good. All right, then that brings our voluntary viewing top 10 shows of 2020 at number 10, Queen's Gambit, 9, Fargo, 8, Rick and Morty, 7, The Good Place, 6, The Mandalorian, uh, five, Castlevania, four, The Boys, three, Auntie Donna's Big Ol' House of Fun, two, What We Do in the Shadows, and number one, Better Call Saul. Now, question to you gentlemen, is this season of Better Call Saul better than the most recent season of Barry? Our 2019 oh, top show man. of, yes. I mean, I'm the only yeah, one. Yeah, he's the only one that saw so Saul. What it's, do you think, they're Ryan? So, they're, they're just different, man. It's oh. apples and oranges. They're both 10 out of 10s. I, I don't know. They're, if, if they were in the same vein, I could be more with it. Barry's so fucking good. Right? Better Call Saul's just, oh, man, it's edge of your seat fucking drama the entire time. There, oh, there's just some insane like plot lines this season. I, well, I, I don't know that I can decide. They're both so fucking good. I, God. If I, it was it, The Crown, I think I would give the edge to Barry. The Crown being my number two show. Okay. Think Slight Edge Barry with Better Call Saul, man. I, I think it's fucking Barry. I think it's Barry. Or I think it's fucking Push. I don't know that I can choose between them. No, no, I get it. And I think uh, by the sound of it, the same reason this show is so high up on your list is the same reason I am just too intimidated to really start digging into it. Because this is, if you were a fan of Breaking Bad and then started picking up Better Call Saul, they are actively rewarding you for investing so much time and energy into these shows. Yeah. Whereas I feel like if I started watching Better Call Saul, I would think if I want to get everything out of this, I need to watch Breaking Bad. It, it, sure, if you want to get everything, but it's a tidbit. Like, I did not remember that. That had to be, like, from the subreddit where they were just like, holy shit, the fact that uh, Vince Gilligan is such a genius that the one, it's just a throwaway line from an episode of Breaking Bad became this entire season is so epic. And I was like, I didn't know that. So, Gun to your head, which one are you putting on as soon as we finish recording? Better Call Saul or Barry? I mean, neither. I've seen them both. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Fine. Keep pushing. Keep pushing on this one. It's never going to happen. All right. I believe that will take us to Voluntary Viewing Top 10 Games of 2020. Andrew, what are your games? Okay. So this first one's going to be controversial. And I put it on here almost as like a... Uh, 
Like I just, te- I, it's like a technical. Um, I put Cyberpunk 2077 on the list at number 10 because it was the 10th game you played this year. Well, no, because I haven't put very much time into it. I've only put okay. probably five or six hours into it. And Fair. I've, I've really enjoyed it so far. I've been one of the lucky ones that haven't been facing a whole lot of technical issues. I was lucky enough to get a PlayStation 5. So it's working for me. I think I'm, I'm really going to enjoy this game. I think if I had been able to put, you know, 20, 30 hours in it, it would have been a lot higher, but also probably doesn't deserve to be that high because of how much of a fuck up its launch was. Um, so I'm just going to put it at number 10. It's not going to make the our official list. I'm okay with that. Um, uh, number nine, Call of Duty Warzone. I have it so low because I started playing this game earlier this year and was enjoying the hell out of it. And then I just wasn't. <laughs> as soon as Truck Strat didn't become viable, it's like, what are we doing? Yeah, it's just, I I stopped getting better at the game. I just, I hit my peak much lower than everybody else. <laughs> and so I, I never became good at the game and everyone else did. It's mm. all skill-based matchmaking is the, the actual problem with it. Yeah. Without that, it'd be perfect. Yeah, it's just, I... <laughs> I, I just kind of like just got frustrated with the game and stopped wanting to play it. Mm. Um, but still, like it was a lot of fun getting the the boys together to shoot some men. Um, number You're number eight, eight, Madden Twenty One, uh, a game that is really fun because it's really hard to make football video game not fun, but it objectively is not that good of a game. Um, <laughs> it, a lot of issues, just. <laughs> Not a lot of support. The game is basically the same as it was two years ago. Um, the new the new uh, next gen update is pretty cool. I think it makes everything look a little bit better, function a little bit better. The play calling is taking some time to get used to, but I think I'm starting to like it. Um, still, tons of glitches though. And number seven, bug snacks. <laughs> bug bug snacks <laughs> is. A video game that does not have a lot of depth to it. it. It's every single like task is go catch this bug snack. And it's usually not that hard to do so. There, there was maybe three or four times where like there was more than one step involved. And like those were kind of fun where you had to like get a chain reaction thing going to like finally capture the bug snack. Um, but the gameplay is just okay. Uh, the story is, is a lot of fun though. Like the, the central mystery, finding out what's going on and what happened to these people is like, just, it's a lot of fun. It's really satisfying. It's a short game, but that's okay. Mm. Number six, Metro Redux. And so I, this one is kind of iffy because, uh, Metro Redux came out this year on the Nintendo switch and I played Metro Redux this year on my PC. (laughs) So I like how you invalidate your own suggestion well, as just, the first thing you say about I, it. I got to come clean on this one. It's just like, uh, they're, they're both pretty good. Um, Metro Last Light is a much better game than uh, Metro 2033. It's just, uh, it doesn't have the, you know, the cult appeal because like Metro 2033 was made by just a, a small group of people as like a passion project, I'm pretty sure. And then, mm-hmm. like, it got really popular, and then they turned Metro Last Light basically into a AAA game. So, um, a lot of fun. Uh, bad, bad, bad voice acting. Which, I mean, <laughs> these these are all Ukrainians making a game and then translating it into English. So, that's <laughs> forgivable. Um, but, like, yeah, like, the, the atmosphere, the story, the, like, lore, it's all a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, number five, Fall Guys. <laughs> Fall Guys, it, it was fun. Like, it was just a lot of fun when we were playing it. I'm never going to forget that. Um, but, like, they just they didn't support it enough. It, it could have been, like, the party game to play for a long time. And I think they have kind of cocked it up a little bit. But we'll kind of see how things go with Season 3. I'm not super hopeful, though. Number 4, Spider-Man Miles Morales. The only actual PlayStation 5 game that I own. Madden 21 is technically PlayStation 5 now, but uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales is a lot of fun. Um, 
it's it's a shorter story from what I understand than the original Spider-Man, but the gameplay is fun. It's I mean, like you get to feel like you're actually Spider-Man. <laughs> how do you how do you <laughs> say anything off. bad about that? <laughs> um number three uh the witcher 3 which came out on the switch in december of last year but i didn't get it until early this year and it's i mean it's the witcher 3 i said it when i finished playing it before i don't have to argue about whether or not the witcher 3 is good it came out five years ago and is one of the more highly regarded games ever it's just just a really 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 good game uh just really really good story lots of good side quests the characters are great i enjoy the fuck out of it Mm. uh number two hades hey hades lucas got me to play it and i'm glad you did it's a lot of fun it's it's Mm. cool seeing this come from an indie uh developer it's just there's a lot of variety in the gameplay the interactions between the different characters and the gods are like just fantastic even if they're only like 10 seconds a piece it's just super fun uh and the way that they deal with death and the loop of things is really cool and i i love it um have not actually finished it i i did beat hades the guy but uh, apparently (laughs) i have to do that a couple more times so um and number one i'm gonna put the last of us two this is kind of weird because i know even though Ryan's had a PlayStation for a little bit, I'm still not allowed to talk about The Last of Us 2, and I will, <laughs> I will respect the, the lack of spoilers that is, Ryan is requesting. I've made it. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a tough one to talk about. <laughs> but uh, it's good. It is very good. It's, it's controversial. I know a lot of people were mad that it won Game of the Year. Uh, I'm totally fine with it, though. I, I think that not only is it visually stunning... But the gameplay is just so just perfect for what it is. And I won't say anything about the story. But I put this at my number one. So take from that what you will. You, you might not always enjoy it, but I do like it. Something that Andrew only kind of likes at his number one by his admission just now. Ryan, what is your top six <laughs> games of 2020? <laughs> Woo! All right. The first incomplete list. We're going to have one more, it looks like. But yeah. I don't play that many video games. And when I do, they're apparently all out of date. Mm-hmm. And yes, video games are a lot harder to rush in a bunch of uh 2020 games uh right before the bell right. like movies and in to an extent tv <laughs> so yeah at number six i have a game that if this game makes the list i will be physically violent <laughs> uh madden 21 <laughs> it's a garbage game for garbage people which me and andrew are and it better not fucking make a top 10 yeah. list i will z- vote no so hard if andrew nominates it even for number 10 i'm not i'm not going to um, it's an objectively terrible video game. Yeah, and, and like I said, it's it's hard to make football video game not fun, but it mm-hmm. is not a good game. Yeah, no, it's fun because it's Madden and it's a football video game, but it's fucking bad. It's bad. We shouldn't have bought it. We shouldn't have encouraged EA. <laughs> uh, but it's the only game in town, and it's frustrating. Uh, number five, another game that better not make this goddamn <laughs> list. <laughs> Not so much a game as a tech demo, Astro's Playroom. (laughs) As you can see, really probably should have only had a couple of games on this list as a whole, so I had to put something. Astro's Playroom did come out in 2020 and is technically a video game, so it's on the list. Number four, NBA 2K21. Not as aggressively bad as Madden 21 and not as not a video game as Astro's Playroom, (laughs) but also probably shouldn't be on this list for a million different reasons. Take your pick. Um, it's fun, and I really enjoy it. And I got a fucking crazy deal because the Target guy didn't care. Yeah. Shout out to my mom, who will definitely be listening to this. Shout out to my um, Target dude. Yeah, I have a ton of fun playing it. Once again, not not a good game by an objective standard compared to you guys who have legitimately like compelling and good games on this list. Uh, I'm just a garbage person. Number three, Fall Guys. 
beginning of games that actually belong in this list. Fall yeah. Guys was a phenomenon. Uh, it was really fun. Once again, yeah, the devs didn't really support it in the way that they could have to make this, like, the next... Not the next Fortnite, probably, but, like, that next, like, right. breakout hit that just catches the world on fire and becomes the thing for longer than it did because it was really only around for a few weeks before Among Us mm-hmm. completely took it off the world. Uh, so, yeah, definitely belongs on the list it's a good game uh number two spider-man miles morales i still haven't finished it and so i don't know if i'm supposed to be applying the same logic that andrew is with like cyberpunk and shit like that but like <laughs> it's a good game and definitely belongs on the list so it's number two for me um and then number one call of duty Warzone. uh if you played battle royale games before call of duty Warzone, the repeated mantra was um man, if only a Battle Royale was done well by AAA developers. And this was it. They yeah. did it. Like, yeah. they, AAA developers made a game that worked, and it was, and it's just a fucking blast. It's beginning to end. It's got minor digs. Like I said, skill-based matchmaking. If you take that out, this game would be borderline perfect. Like, it's yeah. so fucking good. It, it's but, the thing that people have been asking for for over two years. What? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. AAA developers making a... A, a Battle Royale a that battle is royale actually game. good. Yeah. yeah. That first it, it, month. It's... That first month when we were all playing it together and everybody was still kind of just figuring everything out. So we were in just a general skill range as everybody else. Glorious. No, yeah. we were in bad lobbies. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we were skill-based matchmaking into really bad lobbies. And then the problem is, is that you guys didn't play it as much because you're not as big of a freak as I am. I played it a lot. I got very good at the game. And then as a result, we could never be put in the garbage tier lobbies that we were in. And it was would be frustrating for you guys to play. And frustrating for me because I'm a competitive piece of shit that can never drop the... Uh, Drop, drop the K-Fab for even a second uh, and have fun. I have to try to win, and it's painful. So, But it's really good, and ever since I discovered, like, you know, some friends that are more, more like me, they're willing to, like, mm-hmm. grind it and get also sweaty. try really yeah. hard and, yeah, get sweaty. Uh, it's so good. Number one. Fantastic. I sure will not end up on the Oh, boy. That, 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 oh, this is going to be... God, this is going to be weird. <laughs> this is going to be a weird um, list. We have very little overlap. <laughs> Almost yes. nothing. Um, my number 10, Fire Emblem, uh, uh, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade, and the Sword of Light, actually. A uh, Fire Emblem game from 1990, re-released on the Switch with an official translation. Turns out Fire Emblem games, really good before they added a bunch of anime bullshit and also, every Fire Emblem game now has to have three games inside of it. This game is tight, and I dig it. Um, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity. Fun. Fun Zelda fan fiction that wasn't as fan fiction-y as the previous Hyrule Warriors game, which is why it's so low on this list. Number eight, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Mario games are good. This bundle, a little disappointing, so it's only at number eight, but solid, solid video games right here. Number seven, No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle. This is a game critical of the video game industry and Kotaku, and, not Kotaku, uh, otaku culture, and I kind of love it. Uh, it's about ethics number and six. Games journalism. <laughs> no, well, okay, so a lot of people who are fans of this game uh, are weirdly critical of video game journalism, but uh, this game is also making fun of them, so they might just be idiots who don't get it. Uh, number six, No More Heroes, the original one, also re-released on Switch this year. Spectacular. Just just a good hack-and-slash video game that's not afraid to be weird and was designed to be weird, because this is a hard R game that came out for the Wii originally, and I love it. Uh, number five, Fall Guys. This game came out exactly when we needed it to. Exactly as quarantine was starting to really hit everybody. A fun game that was designed to be played with people came out, and I love it. Number four, Dragon Quest XI S, Echoes of an Elusive Age, Definitive Edition. 
Uh, I played the Switch version of this game, which came out in 2019, I believe, but it did get re-releases onto other platforms in 2020, including PC, so I'm going to count this. My first Dragon Quest game, and, well, okay, the first Dragon Quest game I played to completion, and I finally get what everybody loves about this series. Uh, Silvando might be the best character in the history of video games. Hot take. Damn. Number... <laughs> Even I better love than that incredibly Luigi. gay man. <laughs> he, and the game doesn't shy away from it either. No, this is he, he was just a very flamboyant gay man having the time of his life. And, you know, he worked out his issues with his dad that actually weren't actually major issues. So that was really heartwarming. <laughs> Uh, number three, Persona 5, The Royal. This ate up 140 hours of my life. Do I regret some of it? Yes. Is it a good game that's better than the original version? Also, yes. Should it have cost $60? No. It's number three. So yeah, sound, sounds like a top three know. video game. <laughs> I, ah, good shit in there, but... It, this is a game I've maybe thought the most about in 2020. Uh, say anything. I'll say anything else about this, but like that is what this ranking comes down to. Number two, Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's not as good as the original, but it's still pretty good, and maybe it shouldn't be compared to the original, but it's, it has remake in the title, so yeah. Fun. Good. Could be better, but number two... Last but not least, number one, Hades. This is a terrific game. This is just, this is going to influence the roguelite, roguelite genre so much going forward. And this is just the most 2020 game that could have come out this year. This is functionally about getting through what seems like a meaningless struggle and just in the process, not not totally getting out of a bad situation, but figuring out the little things you can kind of do every day to make that situation better and more bearable. And that is, yeah, that that is what 2020 is about, in my opinion. Um, cool. So I think it was uh, Ryan who put Better Call Saul as number one. So we are starting out again, number 10 for video games. Andrew, what do you got? Uh, at number 10, I'm going to suggest that we put... Hmm. <laughs> no, this is... This is this is a weird list. I'm I'm right. Genuinely <laughs> trying to figure out what my strategy here is. Um, I, I think both you and Ryan have stuff on your list that I don't think either of you are comfortable with it being number ten. Yeah, I have stuff on my list that I don't even <laughs> want on the list. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be nominating your guys' games <laughs> um, for a while. Okay, so. Here's how I'm going to start my strat. Um, for number 10, I'm going to suggest uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I'm okay sure. with that. Yeah. So, yes. All right. Not... Uh, could have been better, but at the end of the day, it is still three phenomenal Mario games. I'm going to preface that with uh, you got a couple of games on your list with Lucas that I, despite not having strong opinions on some of my games, I have strong opinions on yours. <laughs> <laughs> I have strong opinions on the things I didn't even play. <laughs> um, I believe that is to me then. Um, hmm. God, this is tough. Uh, Andrew, you cool with bug snacks at number nine? I am. I'm cool. Yes. <laughs> I hate bug snacks, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, how can you hate a game you haven't even played? That's ridiculous. Oh, man. 
It all comes back around. That being said, if, if, you if would... Persona 5 makes it onto the list, I'm going to kill myself on screen. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. Okay, changing my strategies up. Uh, no, Ryan, if you had seen the Bug Snacks meme that Andrew made the other night, you would you would get it. I know. Why can't I see that shit? Can you still not so see it? Even if you like log in on your PC? Yeah, I guess I should try it on my computer. I was actually just about to do that. I had forgotten to last night and my computer was off and I was like... I'm, I'm going to interject on for, uh, for a second video. and go completely, you know, not related. Um, if you are like changing the settings on your PlayStation 5 so that when you double tap the share button, it like, you know, saves a clip. I would suggest actually mm-hmm. in your settings, cl- not clicking record through microphone and only having recorded chat. Because if you record through microphone and you don't have your headphones in, it records through the microphone of your controller and echoes everything. Hmm. Hmm. Weird. But if you're not in a chat, it won't record your voice, right? Yeah. I mean, like, if you're playing through a, a single-player game and, I don't know, if you're not talking, I don't know what, you know, you would want to record. Whereas... I would probably only want to record our voices if we were playing a multiplayer game and we're in chat. I just saw the video. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. He's warming up to it, Andrew. We're doing it. All right, Bug Snacks, number nine. Ryan, what is number eight? Or what is it's your pick for PS5, number eight? And I just haven't played it. Hey. Isn't Bug Snacks a PS5 game too, Andrew? It is, yeah. So you had said Miles Morales is your only PS5 oh, yeah. game that hmm. you own or I guess well, because Pugsnax Pugsnax released, looks like it's a late PlayStation 3 game, it uh, doesn't register. <laughs> You're being generous saying, uh, okay, yeah, late PlayStation 3. Okay, that's fair. Those fur Man. textures, though. I was thinking about cashing in my favor <gasps> to get NBA 2K21 on the list just because points. But guys, I'm a competitive person. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to trash this list. Like I, I, I really don't. I don't want to trash it for the sake of winning the quote unquote game, because at the end of the day, we're judged for the list. Unlike some people last year, I'm not gonna high road them, but all I'm gonna say is that NBA 2K21 does not belong in the list. I had the opportunity to put it on the list using my favor from Andrew. I'm not gonna do that. Um, fuck. I don't know. I don't know most of these games. <laughs> Why is No More Heroes on this list if it was a Wii game? Because it's amazing and it had a re-release on the Switch this year. Did it do anything? Did the re-release do anything other than put it on Switch? Because I see that with The Witcher 3 too, and I'm like, The Witcher 3 does not belong in this list just because it was released on the Switch. Unless they did a bunch of shit to update it. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah the, the, on the Wii game, that... The, the Fire Wii Emblem ga- does not belong. <laughs> like, no More Heroes... Like, these games, if they are not actively making them better, adding to them some way, to me, they definitely do not belong on this uh, list. Like, well, not I mean, the graphics worse. are they worse tethered. on The Witcher 3 for the Switch. That's different. <laughs> they're, they're worse? <laughs> oh, wow. What a great... For No More Heroes, <laughs> famously because that game could only be played with motion controls on the Wii, they had to add an entirely like new control scheme so you can play it in docked mode, so you can play it when it's like, I like it. remote or... Reasonable. Yeah. I count that. What about Fire Emblem? Uh, they... I think we're past it. I don't think it's making the list, but... <laughs> this was, they, this is the first time they translated this game. This is the first time this game has been available to play in English. No, that's not enough. That's fair. Um, this is the first time you can play The Witcher while taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true either. You can have a TV in your bathroom. <laughs> you can have a bucket uh, in your living room. This is the first time you can play The Witcher on a plane, which I did. I, I did the... Uh, Once again, not true. I, I, I did the, Private planes the Nintendo S- mm. uh, Switch commercial thing where I played The Witcher 3 on a train, uh, on a plane, and in a car. And in an automobile? Yeah. yeah. No, some of the, some of these games don't belong, and I will never vote for them. <laughs> and people might overrule me, but once again, I'm all for the sanctity of this list. That's that's paramount to me. Of course, um, as it is to us. I don't fucking know. <laughs> is it Metro Redux or No More Heroes? Uh, no More Heroes Two: Desperate Struggle, number eight. Wow. No, I don't know anything about these games, man. <laughs> Say no, Lucas, if it's bad. <laughs> 
I mean, I, it, mm, I, I'd i rather you'd said No More Heroes, because that'd be a definitive guess, but I would hate myself if No More Heroes 2 got on here and No More Heroes did not, which seems like a likely possibility. Can I not change my answer? I don't know. You can change his answer. <laughs> I don't even like, but once again, I don't like the concept, even though they changed the control scheme. I don't love the concept that it's on the list, even though it's a game from a long time ago. I, I, I can fix it in editing. I can edit out the, uh, the, 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 like, colon part of that title, so to make it sound like you just said No More Heroes. I'm fine with No More Heroes at number eight, Ryan. Great suggestion. <laughs> I'm saying I'm not that comfortable with No More Heroes because it's an old fucking game. Like, I, what, no More Heroes I 2 came it. out in like 2012. Why didn't you say that? They, what, I said there were hey, no I definitely remakes. don't want No More Heroes 2. I assumed that all of these people, or most of these games, were fucking from 2020. No, then I don't want either of them. Can I change <laughs> my answer to none? Metro Redux is number eight. <laughs> Andrew? Yeah, I'll go with it. <laughs> Did Metro Redux come out in 2020? Because I didn't do research. The, the, the Metro Redux came out in 2020, but Metro Redux is just a remaster of... It's a remaster. Well, I mean... It's a remaster. Yes. They what? did shit. Yes. They, they, well, they added... I will vote for Persona 5 The, the Royal. The, the, the graphics worry. and the... The <laughs> graphics are better. They changed the character animations and character models. They added different difficulties and different play styles. Yes. They added more weapons and shit, so... Yes. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Remaster. Okay. They did some uh, shit. But, but mm. also, again, <laughs> should pro- just it's on the list already. It's, it's already there. Um, uh, but just to make Ryan feel bad, Metro Redux came out in, like, I think 2015 or 2016. And then they re-released Metro Redux on the Switch in 2020. <sighs> and they didn't do anything? Well, I mean, they put it on the Switch. No, I'm not putting that on the list. You guys <laughs> suck. Why are your lists so bad? What? Whoa. What Kettle is a game pot. that came out in 2020 that I can nominate for eight? God damn. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Did that come out in 2020? Yes. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity oh my is my pick for number eight. <laughs> yes, I, I can to that. We made fun of this game so much on the fucking podcast. <laughs> it belongs on the list because it came out in 2020 and apparently that's hard to do. <laughs> First off, that is hard to do. Not a lot of games came out this year. That's literally not true. I went through the Wikipedia <laughs> article. There's so many goddamn games. How many of them did uh, you play? I didn't play Ooh. any of them because I'm not a true gamer, and I'm not afraid to admit N- it. Neither are we. <laughs> you guys are absolutely more gamers than me, and Lucas especially. I do not identify Wait, with the I... gamers. Okay. I have oh, my game. God, what a turn. I got nominated four different games. Ugh. Hmm. No, well, I really did just play only old games this year. I mean, uh, <laughs> Ryan. Uh, so they don't it, belong in the list. I don't put those on the list just because they have a weird technicality that technically puts them on the list. Like, uh, just, yeah, Before we get to Andrew's next pick, uh, just, yeah, mm, if I put the Bravely Default 2 demos on my list, which both released this year, would you ca- would, would those count? Are demos also I would excluded? probably count them. I put Astro's Playroom on my list. Okay. I would probably count them more than fucking uh, Fire Emblem, the original game. Like. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's a 30-year-old game. Yeah, the 30-year-old video game, like, just because it... Came out. Yeah, anyway. It's good. This was Fire Emblem before they had 1500 year old dragons. Yeah. I appreciate it. And if they did a remake like Final Fantasy 7, I'd be all for it being on the list, but they didn't. It's just the game. <laughs> they did do if a they re- did a remaster of Metro Redux that had come out in 2020 and not in 2015 and then out on the Switch in 2020. We need to fucking change these rules. <laughs> Oh god, this is under not... revised. Fifty percent of video games that everybody. come out nowadays are just remakes or re-releases. Remakes! They're remakes, not re-releases. If they do something, that's all I want. I just want the developers to have had to go in there and change some shit, update some shit, and then change it counts. a one to a zero. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's all I need. Not just the literal re-release of an old game. <laughs> Andrew, what's your pick for number seven? Uh Oh lord. After all that shit. I'm still gonna nominate The Witcher 3 from the Switch. No. 
Lucas, no. Uh, considering it is the best game that CD Projekt Red put out this year, I will say yes to The Witcher 3. Yay. They didn't do any... You said they made it worse. Why do you want it? Well, yeah, they released it on a worse console. Yeah. The game is worse than the original game, which came out a long time it's, ago. How does it belong in our top It's pretty impressive for a Switch game, honestly. I, I will say that. Sure. For a Switch game, but if the game is worse than the OG version, it, and it's going to be number seven, it's going to be better than a bunch of games that came out in 2020. Technically, I think this Ugh. is the first time that they have the, what is it, the complete edition or the definitive edition or whatever, where they included all the DLC. So they they did release the Switcher alongside the other consoles as the definitive edition. So, uh, uh. That is to me, then, and I would like to nominate Fall Guys for the number six uh, voluntary viewing game of 2020. I'll do it. I'm going to say no, because it's too low. Andrew? Andrew? Andrew. Come to me, Andrew. (laughs) Um, You can get it higher. It's on your list. Yeah, it it, it actually should be higher. Let's be honest. This is one of the few games that we were able to play together this year. Um. Oh, should Battlefield I, what, 1 be on this it, list? <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This is what happened in 2018, and we changed the rules, and now we've forgotten. <laughs> All right. Back on this bullshit. No. Um, uh, it deserves to be higher, Andrew. You had it ranked one position higher. Yeah, I, I, I think that it deserves to be in the top half. I, th- I think six is too low. I think I think five sounds better than six, but... Uh, yeah, I I think I think All six right. is too low. To Ryan, Persona Five: The Royal. Persist. No, I'm tossing you a bone, Lucas. Andrew's going no. to kill you if it doesn't go higher. Lucas, I, I, here's your strategy. Here, I'm going to fight very hard to not get this on the list. However, you might be able to get it higher on the list. You got to take that gamble. I, you might be able to get it higher on the list. I'm going to deny it then, but if you can get Ryan to side with you then, then that's a thing. No, he won't. I'm Andrew, putting it, This is a yeah. one-time offer, Lucas. Lucas this, this, is, this Lucas, is being thrown out there. You know that it doesn't deserve to be this low, and I know it doesn't deserve to be on the list at all. Andrew, you fool. Okay, so hold on. It says it released in October 31st of 2019. Was that in Japan, and then it got re-released in 2020 in the U.S.? Correct, yeah. Okay. Are you sure? When did it come yes. out in the U.S.? I, I, I think like uh, March. Can we just confirm before I have another meltdown? <laughs> um, he, Worldwide, March 2020. Yep, Persona 5 The Royal, absolutely the nomination. Mm. This is your one chance, Lucas. I'm not going to vote for it ever Lucas. again. Lucas? Andrew. Okay, I'm call- Andrew, Lucas, I am every- calling upon my favor for you to say <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, I want to use my favor for you to not vote for this. It will not make the list if you don't, Lucas. Andrew, I am acutely aware of how much you and Ryan both hate weeb shit. I came into this expecting this game to not be anywhere in voluntary viewing's top we 10 games made of 2020. We a deal, you son of a bitch. There was no deal. It was a loose, you if, owe me a favor thing. If you thing. vote for this and you break the pact, you and I can <laughs> never have an alliance on this shit again. I told you, Andrew. I told you that we had a good thing going and look what you've done. Weeb shit is getting on the list. Because of you twice. So wait, <laughs> so because I voted on a kind of weeb thing to try to make peace, you are voting for the most weeb shit? Yes, I don't care. It came out in 2020, you know? Like, once again, I'm for the sanctity of this list. The fucking Witcher? The Witcher 3? The game is old as fuck, and nothing was done to it, and now it's on our best games of 2020. Why are we doing this? This is the 2018 <laughs> list all over again, where we then change the rules because 2018's was so bad that it didn't represent the best of anything. We gotta, we gotta keep striving for perfection. We'll always keep making changes. 
Okay, next Batman year, Luke, if, we're you, if you vote for this, you're out. not my friend anymore. <laughs> <laughs> to that, I say friendship with Andrew over. I'm best friends with Ryan now. Oh, Persona yes. 5 The Royal, number six. Wow. Lucas I, broke I, the pack. I have a favor from Andrew and now a favor from Lucas. I'm just reminding everyone. I had, Andrew, I had, going hey, to you. you know what, Ryan, you don't have a favor from Lucas because you can't rely <laughs> on him. You might think that he, <laughs> maybe one day That's you're going to be in, in battle and, and you need uh, Lucas Frey to send his dudes over the bridge and he just doesn't show up. You know what, Luke, Andrew, I know that it's like a just handshake deal that like is somewhat tenuous. I'm not going to ask Lucas to exclude one of his favorite things from the list, <laughs> like knowingly that it will never ever come up again if he doesn't say yes. I will ask him to approve one of my things that I want on the list, which is much more tenable, I think. I, Lucas Frey pays his dues, but if you're asking me to send my son out to die, I'm saying no to that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what just happened. <laughs> Andrew, number five game of 2020. What's your pick? God, I can feel the seething. Just, ah. Uh, there's a miasma coming from my screen right now. Mm. <laughs> I have to put a legitimate thing in here to try to prevent Lucas from getting more weeb shit on here. And I, uh, Can you put games that aren't on any of our lists? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 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 no. That's not, is that against the rules? Yeah, I, I could that definitely, definitely against Cyberpunk the rules. 2077. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. 100% Cyberpunk 2077 at 5. Why not? Okay. You know what? Because it's bad. Yeah, it came out in 2020. How is it, it bad? It came out in 2020. People like it. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 at number 5, a game that is uh, when you can play it really good and sometimes you can't play <laughs> it at all, but I enjoy the fuck out of it. How is the game itself bad just because like the company got greedy and like released it on a console that couldn't run it. Like the game can still be good. Those two things can coexist. So basically what we have here is if you heard, oh, this movie's coming out, it's gonna be great. Uh, I'm really excited to see this movie. And then you go to the movie theater and you sit down and then they just don't play the movie. <laughs> but some people, some people get to watch the movie and it's really good, but, but some people don't. That, that, that is a fucked up launch, but that doesn't mean the movie is bad. Yeah, I'm not entering it in. I'm not typing it in. If you guys want that at number five, yeah, I, I'm. Mm. Boop. There. You happy now, Lucas? There it is. You fucking happy? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Why are you so mad about this? It's a good game. <laughs> it's a massive AAA release. Might be the biggest release of 2020. Why does it's it probably not hands the down the Because it was just a coping mechanism. People needed something to look forward to to get through 2020. That became Cyberpunk 2077. And now there can be no fair reading of this game because it became this massive cultural thing that it had no right to be. Lucas, uh, we, you and I both got Death Stranding as our number one video game last year. A game that uh. we was like a very good game that I enjoyed the, the shit out of, but it also was a super hyped up game. I, you know what? I have not played Cyberpunk 2077, maybe never going to, but I can say definitively that Death Stranding delivered on that hype. And I don't know if Cyberpunk. That's because De Death Stranding worked when it released. And that's, that's not a defense of <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077, but I mean, like you could play the game and the game was good and the game lived up to the hype. If you could play Cyberpunk, it would probably live up to the hype. People really like you know it. It's what? just a lot of people can't even play it. Like, that isn't immediately disqualifying. You know what? But there is a lot of contention on this podcast right now. I'm going to try to smooth things over. I'm going to try to rebuild these relationships <laughs> by saying Fall Guys for number four. Oh, Can we all agree so, on that? So low. You have it at number yeah, four. Yeah, no, he has a number three. I have it at number three. Number three. Oh, I don't I'm have sorry. any I'm other sorry. games. <laughs> okay, I'll say yes. Yeah, I'll say I, okay. yes. Okay. I have okay. it at okay. five. Okay. Lucas has it at five. Ryan has it at three. I, I think four is good. 
Compromise. We did it. <laughs> we did. All right, Ryan, keep it going. Nice yeah. non-controversial uh, number, number pick. Number three is Call of Duty Warzone. I'll vote for it. I can say yes to that. It's a good game. It, it, it is a good game. It's my that number I just one got game. Frustrated with doesn't mean it's a bad game. I like I always do. I didn't give that game the time it needed to get the most out of it. It's it's when they someone did battle royale right and it scratched the itch. So. Okay, Andrew. So you now are. Oh, this is obvious. Yeah. There's a way. that... Yeah, no, I I know what I'm. I know is... what I'm going to do. Yeah. We know what two is, and then we know what one is, yeah. right? Like at this yeah. point, like I'm, yeah, I, I'm gonna vote for The Last of Us Part Two as number two. No, what, Andrew? I didn't, I didn't think. I that... second that. Yes, Andrew, why? What? <laughs> Spider Man Miles Morales. Okay. You maniac. No, no. Okay. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. Like Spider Man Miles Morales, I love. I, I really, really do like it's it. Off the and list it deserves now? to be on this list, and I'm mad that it's not on the list. However, The Last of Us Part Two deserves to be on this list, and so does Hades. I I think that those two games deserve to be on the top two more than Spider Man Miles Morales. Spider Man Miles Morales, in my opinion, should have been number three or four. I'm s- Why didn't you nominate it for five? Do some thinking I thought you were saving it. Because I was mad. You, you said <laughs> cyberpunk. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. I would have put it for six if I would have known you would screw me like this. Screw you! Oh screwing you! It's one of my only games that I I fought for. I wanted three games on this list. Apparently, that was too much to ask for. <laughs> You're oh my! You god. are the one that put uh, Persona Five at number six. That's that's on I you. didn't know that you were gonna screw me and say <laughs> cyberpunk, and then when it came back to your other, you turn, also voted you for cyberpunk. Yeah, because I didn't know that you were gonna put Spider Man. <laughs> oh my god! It wow. Is. <laughs> the last The Last of Us Part um, Two is an excellent video game. Um, one of my favorites of all time. Uh, Ryan, you need to just finally play it. I don't. I don't give a shit about trying to like wait for a next gen version of it. Just get it, play it finally, so we can talk about it. Yeah. Um, I probably won't now. You're not going to now. <laughs> no. This yes! is this is this is my good omens of this year. It's not. Oh, it's I not had the same three games. Good omens oh, wasn't the show that you games. had been waiting years to watch. And, and that I actively fought against some of my games being included. I only wanted three things, and I missed one of them. The one that belongs there before Fall Guys. It's my number two. And it's your number two as well in terms of my games. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm in pain. I'm I, suffering right now. For it, as somebody who didn't really care for The Last of Us Part Two, but will vote for it just so you we didn't can get even, Hades at number one. It. You didn't play it. Nah, I, I don't need to play it. Um, put that on the back of the Look box, what you've done. Neil Druckmann. What you've done, the the good omens of video games, Last of Us Part Two. Uh, and then I will formally uh, put in uh, my nomination: Hades, number one game of the year. Yeah, Andrew, you realize that, or Lucas, you realize that you have now basically guaranteed Andrew wins. I, I he has want- so many fucking games on this list now. Uh, and he has the media well, savant that I you. am. <laughs> I think. Well, Lucas hmm. Andrew is thirty-eight in games. I think he's going to beat you in games. Fuck. <laughs> well, okay. Which I got the first uh, time. I got ever. eleven. I got ten points on him. Hey, from, hey, 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 hey! We should not be doing the math before the shows. fat lady has sung. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, let's um, move on to movies, and I'll add up the games. Oh uh, wait, wait, hold on. Uh, before we do that, um, and I think this is going to be a discussion between Andrew and I, anyway. So you're good, Ryan. Uh, Andrew, is Hades a better game uh, than our 2019 game of the year, Death Stranding? Um, I mean, they they are not comparable games. <laughs> like, they I, they are not whatsoever comparable. I mean, I I I think that I enjoyed them maybe equally. They did different things for me. Like, Hades gave me something to do to spend my time when I was, like, kind of down. And, like, it's just a fun game that, like, introduced me to a a kind of video game that I had never given 
like a chance before um and it's just like a lot of silly fun uh whereas death stranding was like just taking dopamine and walking through a field <laughs> like i I'm, I'm gonna say death stranding still a better game than hades yeah you know i, 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 I enjoyed that game more than i'm hades. not gonna argue with you i just don't even know how to compare them i don't know how you like choose between the two of them when they have nothing in common i here's how i love hades i love death stranding even more all right, and then that takes us into... Should we, should we update the scores? We didn't after TV, but this time I actually got them done before we started okay. the movies. Uh, go for it. So, then. in TV, uh, I took the lead with 42 points. Yeah. Um, Lucas falling into second with 33, and then Andrew uh, pulling up the rear at 23. How, wait, how do we decide uh, the scores games, again? Is it just if we have something that's on our list... And it makes it into the main list, whatever place it gets. That's how many points we get. Yeah, it's inverted. inverted. Yeah. So inverted, like the number yeah. one show or game gets ten points for you. Number nine or number two gets nine. Yeah. Blah blah blah. So on and so forth. So uh, and then with games and upset, Andrew fucking crushes uh, the game section. Andrew beats Lucas in second by more points than Lucas beat Ryan, who had only two games <laughs> make the fucking list. Should have been three, but only two. Andrew with 38 points, Lucas with 26, Ryan with 15. Uh, and that would put uh, Andrew at a total of 61, Ryan at a total of 57, and Lucas at a total of 59. So a Anyone's very close game. race so far. Uh, Ryan has two favors, and maybe three because Andrew screwed him so bad. <laughs> We're moving, we're moving into movies. Andrew, what are, oh, what's your top seven? Yeah, I do not have ten <laughs> movies. Um, oh, wait. I, the current leader does not have I, ten. I do, I do not have ten. This is uh, probably going to fuck me up a little bit. Um, <laughs> number seven, Stargirl. <laughs> the DC superhero? No, the Disney Plus movie. Um, did you guys ever read Stargirl in like elementary school? No. Stargirl was a book that we read in elementary school in my, like, fifth grade English class. Uh, long story short, it's, uh, um, oh, fuck, what is that movie called? The one with Do Zoe Deschanel and Joseph Gordon-Levitt with the... 50 Days of Summer? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's basically that. Um, it's an uh, introverted kid learns how to uh, be himself because girl moves into town who does not give a shit about any opinions of others and is super weird uh and uh i i enjoyed the movie because i really liked the book and it was like spot on it was just exactly what the book was but i mean it is it's a kids movie um but like you know whatever it's on my list because i saw it um number six enola holmes i talked about this in the podcast a little bit uh fun movie uh, just a you know fun little detective story. You know they put a little twist on the Sherlock Holmes thing, but you know like it's just kind of okay. Number five, The Five Bloods, uh, Spike Lee movie. I saw it yesterday. <laughs> um, it is a sad, disturbing movie. Um, not in a small part because it's one of Chadwick Boseman's last films. Um, about a group of Vietnam vets, uh, African-American Vietnam vets that go back in modern day to Vietnam who had served in Vietnam in the Vietnam War uh, to find the body of their former comrade who had died in Vietnam that they buried there. Um, and then also all the gold that they buried. <laughs> and it has a lot of really good moments, uh, you know, being a Spike Lee movie, like it is about you know, like, the the black struggle in America and, like, everything that's going on right now. And he kind of, like, shows, like, a lot of that through who the different characters are. Um, so a lot of moments of it are really good. Some of it don't make a lot of sense. Uh, and also, it's just brutal. <laughs> so there are, there are parts of it that are just, like, all of this was unnecessary and it's just disgustingly brutal. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... 
that's why I have it down to five on the list, which would normally be high, but I only saw seven. <laughs> um, five is the bottom third this time around. Number four, The Devil All the Time. Uh, it has uh, a really, really good cast. I mean, like, everybody's in this movie. Uh, uh, fucking Edward Cullen is in this movie. Um, Spider-Man's in this movie. Uh, just, just a lot. Andrew Garfield? No, other Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire? No, other Spider-Man. Uh, 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 that that Schmidt from New Girl? Was he Spider-Man? In in uh, he was one of the Spider. He was Peter B. No, Parker. No, no, the, 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 it wasn't Schmidt. It was the other guy from New Girl. Uh, I forget their names. Oh, uh, and anyway, no, like Tom, Tom Holland and uh, Robert Pattinson, who is a good actor, despite what you guys say. Um, it feels like it's a movie that was trying really hard to say something, but didn't really. Uh, a lot of good moments, excellent performances. Um, just kind of a weird movie, though. Uh, I still really liked it. Number three, mm-hmm. Knives Out. Uh, technically a movie that came out last year, but its theatrical release ran into 2020. Just a fun time. Just just a, a really, really good written story. A lot of excellent characters. A lot of really cool visuals. Super awesome mystery. I love it. And there's, it's, there's not a whole lot that's wrong with it. Uh, number two, The Lighthouse. Uh, a movie that we had kind of argued for a little bit on if it belongs on this list, but once we decided it did belong on the list, I put it at number two. It is one of my favorite movies. The Lighthouse is super fucking weird, uh, but it's, it's fantastic. Uh, it's made in a way that isn't really done nowadays. I, I liked the visuals. Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe were just fucking amazing in this movie. Uh, I loved it. And then at number one, 1917, kind of in the same position at Knives Out, came out in 2019, really late in the year, ran into 2020, which is when I saw it. Uh, very, very impressively made movie with the way that they do that, you know, making it seem like it's one shot, which... If you look closely, you can see the breaks, but still did a great job of it. Uh, very emotional. A lot of cool stuff going on. It's just, it's a great movie. I, I think it deserves to be number mm. one. Fair enough. Ryan, that is your top ten, then. hey At number ten, we've got Borat's subsequent movie film. Doesn't belong in the list, but it was the tenth <laughs> movie that I watched, and I didn't get around to any more because... Uh, a life. So, yeah, life happens. Uh, don't put it on there but it's my 10th best movie uh, number 9 Class Action Park really good documentary uh, you guys might have heard of the theme park it's in New Jersey um, it was called Action Park it's had a lot of like YouTube videos written about it like the video essays of just like how fucking crazy it was like at that at that park where they just did not care about safety back in like the 80s and people died and people got injured and it's just a documentary about it and it's really well done uh, number eight, All In, The Fight for Democracy. Um, this documentary primarily follows Stacey Abrams and talks about voter suppression efforts and like how votes have been suppressed ever since America was a thing and how that then uh, trickles all the way down to 2020 and how we currently stand with our political system. And uh, it's a fascinating look at uh, what our democracy looks like uh, in this year. And, and even more poignant because it was made before the election and you get to see what actually happened um number seven onward it's a pixar movie it's really good it's not their best but a really good pixar movie it has an absolute tearjerker moment that like if you don't cry during you're a psychopath um <laughs> real, it's good uh chris pratt was canceled since then but you know, <laughs> tom holland's in it and andrew thinks he's a good actor so it should i'm not the only one <laughs> <laughs> no, I I've also never said that he was a bad actor. Maybe Lucas did. I don't remember where you got that from. I don't think I've said that no, no, no. either. I, I said, I been I going said Robert Pattinson is a good actor, despite what you guys have said. Oh, oh. I thought it was Tom no. Holland. Sorry. I, I mean, are you sure? I'm pretty sure you said that about Tom Holland. I think it was during your The Devil All the Time spiel. No, I, I no, I, I specifically huh? said because uh, the The Devil All the Time Robert Pattinson is in that movie. 
I said Robert Pattinson yeah. is a good actor, despite what you guys have said about him. Also, Tom Holland's in it, and he's really good. Okay, that's fair. Um, at number six, I've got Boys State, which is a documentary that I kind of pointed out to you, tried to get you guys to watch. It's on Apple TV, which is mm-hmm. tough because no one has yeah. Apple TV Plus, which is fair. Right. Um, it's really good, really interesting. I follow one of the main characters on Twitter now. I think I might have mentioned that on the podcast. Uh, just a fascinating look at how we got where we are, I think, like through the lens of uh, Texas Boys State, where they form a government out of high school boys. Um, number five, Hamilton. Uh, it's it's a, It was obviously the world-famous musical. It is now adapted for the screen. Uh, from all accounts, like people who have saw both the stage version and the screen version, the screen version just does a remarkable job at capturing what made the musical so special to see live and in person. And for that, I thank it and think that it belongs in this list, even though obviously the musical came out way before 2020. The movie brought it to the masses for the first time and in a way that... In, in some cases, they said even added to it, being able to see it, like close-ups and stuff like that of some of the actors versus if you're in the back of Hamilton, you're not going to see Eliza's like tiny little facial changes when you know uh, Alexander breaks it to her that you know he had an affair or something like that. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so very good. Everyone should watch it. It's very long, but man, it's a piece of history. It's really good. Uh, number four, The Gentleman, Guy Ritchie. He's really good. It's not his best. Like, Snatch, one of my favorite movies of all time. But at the same time, really good movie, really enjoyable ride. Kind of the boys of movies, honestly. Huh. Like, just kind of a blast. Uh, start to finish. Fun, tons of fun twists and turns. Tons of wacky characters that you come to know and love for Guy Ritchie movies. Uh, really good. Number three, Palm Springs. What a fucking surprise Palm Springs right? was. That was supposed to be filler, like, towards the back half of my top 10 because I needed to watch 10 movies. Uh, Palm Springs is on Hulu. Might be the best in the Groundhog Daying genre. Like last year, Russian Doll was very high yeah. uh, on on my list for TV shows uh, and, and made the top 10s. Like I think Palm Springs might beat it, man. It's really, really fun and brings up a lot of like interesting points from Groundhog Daying that you never really would have thought of before. So Palm Springs, really good. Andy Samberg kind of flexes a little bit. Like, and Kristen Milati is like, God, I got a crush on Kristen Milati. I'm not afraid right. to admit it. Like, she's she's just great. Um, so, yeah, great, great movie. Number two, Knives Out. Andrew talked about it. The mm. Fucking throwback uh, that we all didn't know we needed. Yeah. But Ryan Johnson is fucking good, man. Yeah. He's a good movie maker. Like, Star Wars. Say what you will about Star Wars, but he knows how to make movies. Uh, he, he made the only good uh, one out of the three. Like, <laughs> <laughs> ooh, contentious opinion. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then number one, 1917. Also, unbelievably good movie. Roger Deakins is a masterpiece. Enjoy every single Roger Deakins movie that you can, because obviously he's starting to get up there, yeah. and you're, you're watching a leg- living legend work. It's pretty impressive. Finally so. got his win with. Uh, uh, Blade Runner 2049. I almost said Blade Runner 2077. Oh, no. <laughs> and he's... Uh, now that's a crossover. He's just, I mean, like, he's always consistently put out just excellent god-tier shit, so... Yeah. Okay, cinematography, to... Lucas. Yeah. Okay, fine. He's talking about Roger Deakins. Like, he's talking about fine. the cinematography of Blade Runner 2049. Don't you besmirch the good yeah. name of Roger Deakins just because you didn't yeah, like even, Blade Runner Even if you don't like that movie, Lucas, which is ridiculous uh but but <laughs> even if you don't you cannot say that movie wasn't absolutely stunning visually i think Movies he's about to more... say that andrew you you brought this upon yourself i it was I, I will also say that movies are more than just cool looking shit in motion um uh, all right that brings us to my top 10 movies number 10 sonic this movie isn't good. Um, I feel like I actively hate uh, the politics of this movie. Um, it played not an insignificant part in the ending of the longest uh, romantic relationship I've ever been in in my life. What? But, uh, 
We what haven't heard fuck? about this. Hold this on. is a conversation that's going to happen after the podcast is done. <laughs> is it going to have to happen after the podcast, or is this good material? I mean, this might be good material. Look, it's not a big <sighs> thing. Uh, with my partner at the time, we were in a long distance thing. It was like, hey, you know what? This movie's going to be bad. Let's both try to watch it, and then we can talk about it. And then she was just never able to make the time to watch it so we could talk about it. And that was kind of like the straw on the camel that's like, boy, neither of us are just in positions in our lives where we can make this work anymore. And maybe we're not... Yeah, maybe we're not like the same people that like uh, were able to make this work initially. So Sonic Movie helped me figure that out. And that's Sonic kind of killed a relationship. Damn, damn, bro. You want to <laughs> break COVID protocol so I can give you a hug? <laughs> <laughs> this is in July. Not July. This is in January. I am fine. I'm drinking at three o'clock on a Sunday with my friends. I'm doing great. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I, 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 I need to cut in there for a second. So, so far, with the movies list, you have me, who has nothing with 8 through 10. Uh, Ryan, whose first movie on the list is This Does Not Deserve to Get on the List. And Lucas, whose first first movie on the list is This Is Bad. This shouldn't be on the list. So, I, I I I say we don't have anything at the 10 spot. I say we have nine movies. I disagree. What? Wow, we have that... movies that none of us have. We can. That's where. No, no, I, I know. I'm, I'm, sa- I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just saying. Like, oh. This is, this, this is sounds, ridiculous. This sounds like Andrew trying to hold on to his no, lead right no, no, now. No. Is what this I am, sounds I like. I am joking. We should absolutely have ten. But still, like this is ridiculous. Yeah. I couldn't even watch ten movies. You guys couldn't watch ten good movies. <laughs> I. You know, I, it, you, son, the Sonic movie either by that movie's design or not had an impact on me and my life. And if that is a criteria in which movies are judged, it certainly passes that. All right. Um, Number nine, Scoob. I'm a Scooby-Doo fan. It's very clear that the people who made this movie are Scooby-Doo fans or just people who had Hanna-Barbera as an animation studio influence their lives. But boy, did they make some weird decisions to try to convey that. Like, making the Scooby-Doo cast not sound like the Scooby-Doo cast. And also bringing in Hanna-Barbera characters nobody cares about. Do you guys know who Dino Mutt and the Blue Falcon are? No. No. I never watched it, but I know who they are. They're in this movie for some goddamn reason. Uh, number eight, an American pickle. Um, this movie's fine. I I always appreciate the actors playing two two characters in the same movie bit, and that is what this movie is. And it's Seth Rogen doing it. So fair. Number eight, hmm. number seven, Eurovision Song Contest: The Story of Fire Saga. I don't think Will Ferrell is ever going to put out a movie as good as Talladega Nights or Step Brothers or any of his classic shit, but earns enough goodwill for me to watch this movie, and it was solid. Too long. Definitely definitely knows that it's on Netflix. People are going to pause it so it can be a half an hour longer than what it needs to be and not cut out any jokes, but it's fine. Uh, number six, Birds of Prey uh, and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. This is a fun movie. This is one of the few fun DC movies, and at a tight hour and a half, it was an enjoyable experience. Number five, Dragon Quest, your story. This is the Pixar-ass Dragon Quest movie that came out this year, and it is about why Dragon Quest is a cultural phenomenon, why it means a lot to so many people, and even if I'm not totally in on that Kool-Aid, I can at least appreciate all of the heart behind this movie. Number four, Palm Springs. Ryan said before, classic time loop movie. It, If you're going to do that concept, it is very clear you have to step it up just because of how high a batting average that genre is. And this lives up to that. Uh, number three, The Lighthouse. Um, if I had a roommate in quarantine, this is what it would be like. <laughs> it's good. I uh, number two. I, I I gotta cut in again. I'm sorry. I know we're gonna go over time, but 
I got to cut in and say, what is um, when they interviewed uh, Willem Dafoe, Robert Pattinson, and then the director of the movie, uh, one of the questions that they asked all three of them separately is, are these guys gay? These two lighthouse <laughs> keepers, are they, are they gay for each other? And the director said, I'm going to leave that up to your interpretation. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, uh, Willem Dafoe said, absolutely not. Like, that's not their dynamic. Uh, Robert Patton said, oh, yeah, no, they're super fucking gay. Like, they, <laughs> they, want, they want to fuck so bad. I think that's more evidence, though, that Robert Pattinson's <laughs> a bad actor. <laughs> you, you keep trying to defend him, and then you keep giving us more evidence i mm, i'm gonna take the middle ground and say that robert pattinson is as good as the material he has given uh number two for me knives out uh we've already spoken about this um my family has a tradition where we uh now watch a movie on christmas day obviously can't do that this year because movie theaters kill people right now um but this is the movie my family and i are going to watch on christmas (laughs) day this year uh, and then last but not least, Uncut Gems, uh, released late enough in 2019 that it counts. This movie is spectacular. The fact that Adam Sandler is playing the lead in this movie is spectacular. I know I'm going to have to throw some elbows to get it on the overall list, but it really deserves to be. There you go. I... And with that, I think it's me, right? Yes, Ryan, starting us off. Hey. Um... I'm going to go number 10 is Class Action Park. It's a a really interesting documentary about a really interesting subject. Chris Gethard is in it. I don't know if you guys know who Chris Gethard is. (laughs) No. Ah, he's kind of like the most Jersey dude ever. He he was in, like, he did a public access show called The Chris Gethard Show that became so big that it, like, turned into a real show that wasn't on just public access. Like, if you guys know what public access yeah. is. Right. It's just, so, you go to your local PBS with a camera and do some so shit. So, it's, it's Two Ferns, the movie, in real life. Honestly, yeah, that's, well, not the movie, the Chris Gethard show. Right. Is. And, yeah, Chris Gethard, they interview because he's the most Jersey dude of all time. And went to Class Action Park. And all it is is he would he was, like, sucking the dick of the park. And it was ironic because, like, they would always cut him in after showing, like, the family of someone who died there. And then it would cut to Chris Gethard, like, yeah, I don't know, man. If you weren't, like, if you weren't busted up and bruised, like, I don't know. Like, you didn't really experience Class Action Park. And it's, like, his spine was uh, severed when <laughs> and it's just, like, holy shit. They, it's really good. They made Chris Gethard an unintended heel. Yeah, he ended up Jesus sounding like a bad guy, kind of, and it's amazing. Okay, so, you just sold it well enough there. I'm down. This is a yes. Right. And you should watch it. It's on HBO Max. I see that you got American oh, Pickle. Cool. So yeah, yeah. That, only nice thing I'll say about AT and T Internet is that I got HBO Max for free. Um, nice. Andrew, that is to you then. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to say at number nine, uh, Birds of Prey. Uh, I'll say yes. Yeah. It's it's a movie yeah, that I didn't see. Yes. I, I like did actually movie. want to see it. Uh, I was pretty interested. Jade wanted to see it a lot too. We just never made the time. But I it. That movie is that movie is 100% just the superhero power fantasy but for women for once. And that's yeah. Mm. That's good enough. To me, number 8. Um problem is that we don't have a lot in common at the bottom of our lists. No. So, we do have a fair amount in common towards the top. Towards the top, right. Um, uh, Eurovision Song Contest. It's Will Ferrell. Uh. Is Will Ferrell having fun and reminding everybody that he is a legitimately good singer? 
He's definitely a decent I don't, singer. I don't know. I just... Yeah, I heard kind of negative things about it. I don't... You didn't, I, you didn't even say that much good about it. Which, I mean, to be fair, a, a lot of us in the bottom half of our... All three of our lists started out with... And number eight, this thing, it's not that great. Number seven... I, what? Not for movies. No, no, but I mean... For me, other than Borat, it's all belongs, as far as I'm concerned. Elves are real in this movie, apparently, and they kill a capitalist banker who is trying to murder Will Ferrell. I just... The uh, the actual bad guys of this movie are that asshole uh, banker and the not uh, the guy from Russia, but the nation of Russia. And this movie goes out of its way to remind people that Russia doesn't allow people to be gay and reports to have zero gay people in Russia. Again. It's a fun, socially responsible movie, is what I'm saying. I just don't know if that makes it good. I, I just I just heard right. a lot of, like, very mediocre to negative stuff. Fair. Andrew, to you, then. It's to me. To right. Fuck, I am sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna say all in the fight for democracy, because fucking Stacey Abrams delivered us Georgia, and... She deserves it. <laughs> like, you, you watch... You watch what they were trying to do, like, in order to prevent what happened to her happening on a nationwide scale, and it fucking worked, man. It was cool. It was cool to watch, like, them being like, holy shit, voter suppression is real. And look at them. They're already laying the foundation for saying vote by mail is fraudulent. We need to fight this. And then them, f- and then we find out they fought it, motherfuckers. <laughs> like, they did it. They fought for democracy. And you know what? It, sure, it ended up us, us getting Joe Biden, but it's better than the alternative. It's an improvement. Yeah. All right, I'll say yes to all yeah. fight for democracy. I, I, I think that Yay. they earned it. You made me waver when you're, you concluded with Joe Biden, but we're still strong enough argument <laughs> as a whole. The dial started to... We are going negative, to take but... this country back with Joe Biden. Uh, Yay! <laughs> <laughs> We did it. Uh, Andrew. Hmm. Number seven. I'm going to say uh, The Five Bloods. I think it was a culturally culturally relevant movie. Spike Lee is always controversial. It's, it is Spike yeah. Lee, right? He. If it's Spike Lee, I feel like it got decent yeah, press. It. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, like it's one of Chadwick Boseman's last movies. It was. I will say this: it's not a bad movie. Um, and I, I it, no, it, it is a good movie. Um, it is kind of a bummer of a movie, um, but it has a lot to say. Of course, you know it's a Spike Lee movie. He always, you know, he he makes the most out of his opportunities to get a message out, which is good. Um, I, and does I mean, does I'm, a lot of interesting things with the way that images are presented in the movie where they uh, intercut things that they're talking about with just photographs and film and text of what they're talking about. And then also the, when the four old guys have their flashbacks from the Vietnam War with Chadwick Boseman in there, Chadwick Boseman playing a young man in the war, they are still all old is, is something that I didn't expect, but I kind of did appreciate by the end of the movie with these, you know, late 60s early 70s dudes playing their 18 year old selves fighting in the war to like kind of show how like they got to grow up and they like carried that baggage with them but he didn't because he died in the war and then i just yeah i'll go with it yeah i mean it's in but on and like i understand but i'm I'm going to say no, even though it doesn't matter because it kind of seems like your principal argument is this movie is good because of the names attached to it and also it has themes. But, yeah, it's fair. I mean, like, the names attached to it, like, it had, yeah, it has actors attached to it and they gave a good performance. It had a a well-known director to it who did, like, a kind of an interesting thing with the movie. I think that gives it merit. That's fair. Um, for number six, I am going to go with this one because this is the only place I'm going to be able to get this one in. Uh, Uncut Gems. Yeah, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that too. I, I never saw it. I Easy. don't think it's going to be my cup of tea. Got hype. But... 
I think it's it was just a little depressing for me <laughs> to watch. By the time I would have gotten around to it, it would have been quarantine, and I started doing a couple of depressing things and quickly realized that don't do that during quarantine. No, this is... So. I am thrilled I watched this before quarantine because this is just a man's life falling apart by his own actions, and fuck, yeah, no. It's pretty... That's pretty brutal. That's fair. Um, Ryan... I, Number five. I have an interesting. So I know the lighthouse is going to be in there. Uh-huh. You guys are going to make sure of that. I think. I think so we know what the top go? three should be. <laughs> yeah. We know what the top three should be. So then it's. I probably can't get two. And I can't use my favor to ask for someone else to nominate. That's against the rules, right? Yes. I think I don't think that is explicitly laid out in the rules, but I think the gentleman's agreement is that a favor is saying yes to something. Damn it. Or no to something, apparently, from Andrew's favorite. Oh, okay. Fuck, man. I really want... Okay, no, I, I know how I play this. Um, number five, I'm going to say The Gentleman. I wish it was Hamilton because I really want Hamilton to be on here. But The Gentleman's an actual movie and it did release in 2020. Hamilton, it is a musical uh, that the movie came out in 2020 and actually brought it to a broad audience. But I'm going to say The Gentleman uh, at number five. It's fucking good. It's Guy Ritchie. It's a romp. What like, year did anyway. Hamilton the musical come out? Originally, what, like 2014 or something? If we were doing this in 2014, that would have been the musical of 2014, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Whatever year it came out in, it's, I mean, it's the musical of the decade, potentially the century, like, it's it's a big deal. Suck it, Book of Mormon. Yeah. So I'll say The Gentleman. Um, And, I don't know, Andrew, I call on your favor to say yes. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) I have two favors, and at this point, I feel like it's pretty decently set. So, fair, Andrew. That was back to you mm-hmm. then. Okay, so number number five was the gentleman. Okay. Yes. Um, I know how this is going to go. Uh, I'm still <laughs> going to nominate the devil all the time at number four, though. No, because it 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 is a very hey, Lucas. We have movie. a good number four. <laughs> say no, uh, Lucas. I, I call I, upon I'm, my I'm favor. Going to say no. I'm no, no, no. <laughs> there's no favor. How is there no favor? There's no favor. <laughs> you can't, you I can't mean, just say there's no favor. The favor has been turned. You've already rejected you my said favor they don't, once. That you will never work with Aunt Lucas ever again. <laughs> the favor is you gone. You already rejected my favor once. You can't do it two times. You, he literally can because you torched the favor. You said that everything is done between us. Dude, Palm Springs is the perfect number four, and then we know the top three. It's Andrew, no. you have a sense of and- honor, please. Andrew, There's no honor when he when you you burned I didn't burn the favor. I burned the bridge because the Lucas you violated did. the sacred rule. No, you told him to like Lucas said, kill his son. He said no, and then you said, "All right, Lucas, scorched earth, motherfucker. We're never working together ever Don't again." Talk to me so why would he ever do again. a favor for you? Andrew, I torched. I would say yes to this, but I'm in a position where I can get everything I want now, so I don't <laughs> need to say I don't oh, need to respond to you. your favor. I'm gonna ma- I'm gonna make the uh, spreadsheet for 2021 list <laughs> right now, and I'm just gonna type in every single box. Fuck Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> you went too high, man. Double all the time could have gotten in there at the bottom. I, too high. Uh, man. I mean, if you had if you had pitched that for number seven instead of the five yeah, bloods, that would have been yes. Bloods. I think you got to be happy. I should have put it in at number nine instead of Birds of Prey. I, sure. Yeah, I tried to tried to yeah, do something nice for Lucas. Apparently, again, that's what's fucking me in the end. I don't know why you did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am formally saying no to the devil all the time at number four. Wow. Hmm. Kind of to go find myself Which means a new it is to me, and I would like to nominate Palm Springs for number four. I will say yes. Hmm? It's fucking good. Andrew, you should have watched it. It would have made your top ten list, and you would have gotten points. Yep. Don't have Hulu. 
I, you, you have an unused e- between you and Jade. You have an unused. Email. You know they do it by credit card number now, right? No, I'm sure they do. I, I, <laughs> no, well, no. I mean, like I've tr- I've tried to you know do free trial accounts with stuff before, and I said like you already used this credit card number on a you know a trial a while ago, so don't fucking pay for it, you asshole. There you go, Ryan. Right. This is this is my gambit. Number three is going to be the lighthouse, and Lucas, I'm calling on my favor, and it's your number three. Uh, I'm going to say yes to the lighthouse at number yeah. three. That's my gambit. Your gambit, like well, but well, you could have gotten it a little higher, maybe, and then I right. would have been left out. I would have missed oh, one no. point. Like we, <laughs> I'm playing we the all, game. We all, know, <laughs> I, we all know what they're going like, regardless of whatever order they're in. Like we know what's going to be on there. I mean, the lighthouse was my number three, so yeah. I'm I, obligated. I had to say it number yes two. I'm fine with it as number three. <laughs> Well, it's one extra point, baby. <laughs> I I did all the mental math when I had to pick the gentleman at number five. I was like, how do I, how do I get the squeeze the most amount of points? Because it seems like it's pretty set here. And it was <laughs> get Lucas on my side for Palm Springs, get Lighthouse as low as possible, and then uh, <laughs> we know the number two and number one. And it doesn't matter the order because I have both of them. Yeah. So. Although I do think that there is an order, and Andrew, I think you're gonna go along with it because yeah, you're yeah. No, so it's it's me, right? Yeah, yep. we're we're going with Knives Out, right? Yeah, Knives yep. Out, fantastic movie. It's my number it's, two. It's a lot of fun. It's my number three. I'm, yeah, no, that makes total sense. This is no skin off my back. <laughs> you gave me one extra point. Yeah. Um. Ah, fuck. That puts me in the awkward position where. <laughs> You're about I to ne- give us 10 points. <laughs> I now have to nominate a movie I didn't see, which just well, no, feels you don't have bad to. on You don't have to. We'll yeah. just say no. <laughs> but my number one already got in there. And like all... Yeah, but you my- could say Dragon Quest. <laughs> yeah, nominate Dragon Quest, Lucas, please. <laughs> we'll please say do no, it. but you can do it. Doesn't if you deserve- feel bad. It doesn't deserve to be number one, though. Uh, 1917. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It was the best movie. I, I really, I don't know if it'll ever be re-released oh. in theaters, but I hope it does for your sake, Lucas, because that's that's where you need to see. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know if I want to uh, watch it on a TV screen. Yeah, I agree. I, I just want to point out to the audience who can't see this, because it's numerics, 1917 formatted to the right, yeah, yeah, uh, right side yeah, of the cell. No, this, this happened to me, too. I can I can fix this. Oh, yeah. No, I got it. We're good. Um, so then that puts our voluntary viewing top 10 movies of 2020 as number 10, Class Action Park, 9, Birds of Prey, 8, All in the Fight for Democracy, 7, The Five Bloods, 6, Uncut Gems, 5, The Gentleman, 4, Palm Springs, 3, The Lighthouse, 2, Knives Out, and number 1, 1917. And now I ask you, gentlemen, is the movie 1917 better than, uh, 20... 19's number one movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, uh, yeah, I think yeah. yes. Really? I think this is the, okay. f- the first one where I can firmly say that I think 1917 is it, better. It than is. It is a Once Upon a, a time much in better movie in terms of how it's filmed, and its its story is. I mean, it's it's really not much of a story, but it's it doesn't mean it's a bad story. It's it's very simple in a, a beautiful sort of way. Um. Yeah, I'd, I'd say 1917 is better than Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Fair. All right. I didn't uh, see This it. category was remarkably yeah, close. Shit. Ryan's, Ryan got the victory with 36. Andrew and Lucas tying uh, with 31 apiece. So in other words, Lucas throwing the games category did cost him the win. I don't know what the final scores will be. 38 plus 23 plus 31 for Andrew 92. gives him 92. Um, 36 plus 42 plus 15 for Ryan is 93. No! Holy <gasps> fuck! Oh, shit! And then uh, we unfortunately know that Lucas doesn't win, so it's anticlimactic. But Lucas with a final score of 90. What a fucking close God, year. No! Ryan ekes out the, the one point! <laughs> Okay. Do you no, remember okay, okay. again? Not the lighthouse at number three versus knives out at number two doesn't matter. The only way that you wouldn't have gotten the points is if I didn't put knives out on it at all. 
How? Because, okay, so the lighthouse being at number Switch three. Switch them. Like, yes. it gives me, uh, what, would, what would that be? Eight, eight. points. It gives yeah. you eight. And Knives Out being at two gives me nine. Because That's all three point. of those movies were going to be one, two, and three in whatever Andrew, order. Andrew, they're worth different point values. You don't have, uh, oh, no, you do have yeah. Knives Out. It, Shit. it doesn't. Yeah. No, but I don't have Lighthouse. We would have tied. I don't have the lighthouse. If the lighthouse would have given you nine points, mm-hmm. yeah, no, no because right. because Fuck. if the lighthouse didn't give me nine points, mm-hmm. knives out would or nineteen seventeen would. It did not matter yeah. for me those top three. I had all of the top three were my top three. It, it does not matter the order. Yeah, but you would have had ninety two. I would have had ninety two as well if you flipped knives out and lighthouse. I'm a, I am right. I Andrew, what really would have done it for if you had gone with uh, D- D- Five Bloods for number yeah, nine won. and then snuck in? Well, I don't know if I would have said. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't okay. think you guys would have okay. done both of them. Yeah, if you would have put up Five Bloods for nine, I think I would have been yeah. wary about. Dead I, all the time I, I at think. Seven, I think so. maybe mm-hmm. if I had somehow gotten uh, the Devil all the time at nine and the Five Bloods at seven, like I would have won. I don't think I would have been yeah. able to get both of them though. But I, I'm just saying that I am right because I didn't have the lighthouse. So if Knives Out moved down to three, I get one less point. Uh, and I would have had 92 and we would have tied. So I did. My gambit actually did matter at the end of the day. <laughs> Delivered me the victory. I am... I'm pissed that I got third for two years in a row. But wow, oh, you this took was second so... last year. Oh, okay. You beat me by one point last year. When oh, I took third. huh. All right. I, I yeah. won by a and lot if I, last if year. If I would just... Pl- if I would just play the video games you guys played, I feel like I'd clean up every year. But Or just any game so that you can get more than, what, how many? They're 15. Oh, buddy. I improved. Last year I only had 13. And this year I should have had more, but fucking Spider-Man <laughs> didn't get on the goddamn list. Uh, actually, speaking of, I don't think I listed off uh, top 10 games. Uh, that is 10, Super Mario, 9, Bug Snacks. 8, Hyrule Warriors, 7, The Witcher 3, uh, 6, Persona 5, The Royal, 5, Cyberpunk 2077, 4, Fall Guys, 3, Call of Duty Warzone, 2, The Last of Us Part 2, and number 1, Hades. Yeah. Look at that. <sighs> we've, got our, we've got our top 10s, folks. I'm sure, will they be in the description or something so that people can... Uh, we link to the doc. That's fair. Yes. And then you'll see the math. The math. 93 to 92 to 90 what is i mean i don't remember what it was like in 2018 but there's uh, no fucking way it was that close right? did we even do scorekeeping in 2018 yeah we did okay 2018 the i didn't final... add them below i don't see oh. final scores do you no uh i do not uh let's do it let's see what we scored we each add our own up all right oh boy i did very poorly <laughs> That was the year of the no. Week. I had ninety five. I did. I scored eighty two <laughs> in twenty eighteen. Why? Why isn't my keyboard working? What the fuck? Can I not edit this? Oh, I might have turned that off. Ryan, yeah, you scored ninety five. Oh, because the people. Right. I had ninety five. What did um, Lucas have? He... I had sixty two. Yeah. So Ryan. Oh. I had eighty two. Lucas had sixty two. Ryan had ninety five. In 2018. Well. All right. And Andrew said you were 82? Yeah, in in 2018. Wow. So that's really cool that we we made this one real tight. Shoring up, yeah. This one was wild. So I took top shows by a a big margin. Mm -hmm. I took top movies by a hair's breadth, and you guys were neck and neck. Andrew took top games by a huge margin and Lucas in second and it added up to all within three points of each other. Fuck. And with Death Stranding being tentatively better than our... Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong doc. Shit. Yeah. Um, no, with... Uh, bu- 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 uh, with 1917 being the only piece of media we can definitively say was better than the number one spot from last year. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Barry and Better Call Saul is a push, and I feel like Death Stranding, you guys said, was at least better. Maybe Andrew was iffy, but I yeah. just don't think they're comparable. Yeah. I, I think that I remember, I, I think that I will remember Death Stranding longer than Hades, which probably means it's better. 
I just don't even know how you really compare them. Apples to oranges. Bitch, that don't make no sense. Why can't fruit be compared? <laughs> that that is a that is a bad uh, like saying though. Like it's like comparing apples to oranges. You can absolutely compare apples to oranges. They're both round, sweet fruits that you eat, like as a snack. I... You can absolutely compare Death Stranding and <laughs> Hades. They're both video games that you play with your hands and move characters around the screen. <laughs> I... You can do it. <laughs> All I'm saying, you could go on a tier. There are absolutely tier maker sheets of fruit out there right now. People have done it. People have compared these things. All right. I God, this has been like more than two hours. Um, thank you all so much for listening to the Voluntary Viewing 2020 Top Tens. Well, other people are going to be out there saying that these are the, their rankings of media for this hell of a year. They're wrong. This is definitive. Respect, but we built different over here. Um, and thank you all for sticking with us for uh, 2020. We had a lot of great stuff. Uh, Quarantine Cast has been phenomenal, and we've seen a lot of people show interest in that. Um, might be one or might, might be a few more of those as the year peters out. I don't know. We'll figure it out. If you, God, check us out on Patreon. Uh, email voluntaryviewing at gmail.com. We are on Instagram, Twitter at v2 underscore podcast. Um, I think that was all of it. I'm Lucas DeWriter. My Twitter at Lucas DeWriter. Anything else? Anything else to close this out, guys? Wear a goddamn mask. Yeah. I, I was all for sanctity of the list, and I was rewarded by the top tens gods. <laughs> All I cared about was the list. Congratulations, Ryan. And we will see you all in 2021, which is hopefully not 2020 part two. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye.